On today's episode of the Mark Titus Show, Rutgers is dancing, TJ. How does that sound? Yes, sir. We're back. <laughs> Never a doubt. They were dead. Uh, Michigan was going to win the Big Ten tournament. We, we both agreed on that. It yep. was going to happen. Ah, shoot. Damn it. My pick was wrong, TJ. I hate when this Shoot. Ah, man. Ah. Um, Rutgers is in. Yeah. Definitively in. Yes, sir. Good times on the show. We're fired up because not only is Rutgers in, TJ, dare I say it, dare I put it out there, dare I speak it into existence, the Ohio State Buckeyes might be dancing too. We're only three wins away from then being six wins away from winning the national championship. <laughs> Just a couple of winners in this studio. <laughs> um, good vibes flowing in the studio tonight. Uh, both of our teams are winners. We'll see what tomorrow holds. If Rutgers beats Purdue and Ohio State beats Michigan State, I think I, I, I pitched this to TJ. I said uh, if, if Rutgers and Ohio State actually meet in the Big Ten tournament, the loser has to leave the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then TJ said, what happens if Ohio State loses? Are you going to leave the Mark Titus show? And I said, yes. I said, get Brandon Walker to host it. And Brandon was like, I'll do it. He will do it. <laughs> <I'll> do it. <laughs> uh, we're fired up, man. It's exciting. Uh, fun day of conference attorney action today. Uh, the Thursday is always – this is this is one of the, the best days of, of college basketball. Just had the, the, This particular Thursday, so many teams playing, so much insanity going on. Mississippi State beats Florida in overtime. Uh, the Big East Garden – I went over uh, – the, the, the Big East action at the Garden. I went over there for a few of the games. Um, so loud. The Marquette St. John's game was was a quintessential St. John's in the Big East tournament game where they were the better team for most of the game and then found a way to lose it because that's what they do. Um, the the second game, UConn got up huge, started to squander it. Just an awesome day of college hoops. Duke is is lurking, by the way. The the Duke monster is 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 getting stronger by the day. Uh North Carolina is dead officially the preseason number one team in the country is not going to make the tournament. So uh, there's a ton to talk about. We'll, we'll do our best to sift through it all. Also the coaching carousel is underway. Jim Beheim, since we last did a show has retired slash was fired slash. It was a mutual decision. Nobody's really sure. All we know is that he's no longer the coach of, of the Syracuse orange. Patrick Ewing was officially fired tonight. Uh, Chris Beard to Ole Miss is gaining some serious steam. There's a lot of smoke uh, coming out of Oxford, and uh, it looks like that might be happening. I don't know. Mark Fox was fired at Cal, and all eyes are on Rick Pitino and St. John's. Now that St. John's has bounced from the Big East tournament, will Mike Anderson be fired? Will Rick Pitino be hired? I certainly think so. John Fanta said no on this show, but John Fanta doesn't know everything. He's not God. He's, he, doesn't, he doesn't have all the answers. Rick Pitino to St. John's. Let's make it happen. Uh, also today, we have Stanford Steve joining us. He came in town for the Big East tournament um, swung by the studio. We interviewed him before the games today. Uh, I don't think that's that big of a deal. I don't know if, how dated it's going to be other than him saying like he, he loves Pitt to beat Duke. And I think he liked Villanova to win the <laughs> Big East tournament. So that didn't age well, but we had a fun conversation. Uh, Stanford Steve's the best talked about, uh, the Big East tourney, him being a Duke fan, which is disgusting and him having a list of 23 teams. He think can win the national title, which is somehow more disgusting than him being a Duke fan growing up in Connecticut. Also, uh, Merrimack head coach, Joe Gallo, Joined the program for a little bit. Uh, if you don't know this Merrimack story, basically they won the Northeast Conference regular season. They won the Northeast Conference tournament. And still, in spite of both of those facts, they were not allowed in the NCAA tournament. So I had to get him on the show to explain to me what the hell is going on. Um, and basically ask all of my listeners, all of my audience, to jump on the Merrimack bandwagon, unfortunately, next year because their season is over. So we talked to Joe Gall a little bit. Uh, also on this show, we are going to wrap it up. At the end of the show, I'm going to do my awards. I felt like... Uh, I should have done this maybe the first show, um, but every show I'm doing is like three hours long. <laughs> every time I look over at TJ, he's, he's nodding off, so uh, I decided not to do it on the first two shows. I'm going to do my All-American team from this year. Uh, I'm going to make my Coach of the Year pick, and I'm doing my Make Shots All-Stars, which will make more sense uh, when I do it. But uh, I, I personally believe that making shots is a, is a, is a crucial, crucial part of winning college basketball game, so I want to give it to the guys that I feel like are the make shots all stars. All of that is coming up. Let's get to it. All right, before we dive into it, uh, call to action for all the uh, for all the listeners. Uh, please subscribe. Please uh, uh, review. Please uh, do all of those things. Give us five stars on Apple. Go to uh, 
Go to YouTube and give a thumbs up, subscribe, tell your friends, all this sort of thing. This stuff matters uh, very, very much. It seems stupid. I understand what it sounds like to be on the other end of this. I listen to a lot of shows. I watch a lot of shows. I know what it's like for the host to say, please help us out. Um, but I'm going to do it to you anyway because uh, it does make a massive difference for us, and uh, I would greatly appreciate it. What? A, where, where are we? Are we? I've, I've been getting some questions. Are we on Google Podcast? People want to know that. Um... I don't think so. It's Spotify and Apple are the main two that we use. Yeah. I can certainly look into it, though, if people use not. I don't know. People are asking me about Google and, like, Stitcher. I don't know. How many podcasts? There's too many podcasts. Yeah. There's too many There's too podcasts. Many podcasts. There's too many podcasts in general. <laughs> but uh, anyway, help us out, um, and we'll we'll try to help you out, I guess. We'll look into uh, – I, I don't know. People, are, people want Google, I guess. I, I also know. have seen people – Wanting you to lean into Big Cat's suggestion of the Mark the Titus Mark Titus. Well, I mean, if the Buckeyes keep playing the way they are, I'll <laughs> lean into. I mean, part of the reason I didn't like that idea was because my basketball team is dog shit. But um, if we're gonna keep winning, this is this has been a delightful surprise. Yeah, I, I'm losing my mind around this office because, like, uh, uh, as we know, not a lot of people here follow college basketball super closely. TJ, so. Um, I'm getting questions from people as I continue to get excited about Ohio State winning. I'm getting questions around the office like, is Ohio State good? Or is Ohio State going to make the tournament? All that sort of thing. And I have no other way to describe it than to say, we're a good team that loses games. And then they they look at me like, that doesn't make any sense. And I go, I know. I, it doesn't. I don't know how else to explain it, though. We are a good team. We just lose games. Now, all of a sudden, we're not losing games. Uh, I don't know what tomorrow holds against Michigan State. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to celebrate the fact that we are still playing. We, we are still technically in contention for a national championship, as is Rutgers. You're in the tournament, though. I think so, yeah. I, I don't, I, I'm guaranteeing it. I'm, it's a fact. Um, but at the same time, why? Like, I, I had a few people ask me, um, are, are you going to uh, reimburse them for like losing their rent payment because they listened to the show and heard you say that Rutgers is dead and it's over? And, <laughs> and then we both said Michigan's winning yeah. the Big Ten tournament. I, had, I planned on hedging my happiness because that is true. the team looked dead for the last three weeks, but we're we're back. Derek mm. Simpson's a freshman. He's Geo Baker reborn. Yeah. The Big Ten tournament's been wild so far. Crazy. But until, until Minnesota lost tonight to Maryland. The lower seeded team won every single game to start this tournament. It's March, <laughs> which is uh, which is pretty indicative of that conference because that's what I, I again it'll drive you crazy. But like as a guy who's who's an alum of the the thirteenth seeded team in the conference, there's not a team that like if 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 Ohio State was play, or any other team. I'm just using Ohio State as an example because we're the thirteenth seed and we're the worst team left in the tournament as a, a, a in terms of seeding. Um, there's not a team that you would stack us up against where I'd be like, we have no shot. I mean, pretty, if we play, Same. you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So that's what, like, I, I'm, I, I'm like kind of leaning into it and like know that it's absurd for me to expect Ohio State to win five games in a row in five days and make the tournament. Like, I don't actually expect that. But then also I'm like, why not? Yeah, we can beat Michigan State. And then who would we play with? If, if Purdue beats Rutgers, we can yeah. beat Purdue. We can beat Indiana. We can beat. And that's, that's what kills you, TJ, is the hope. Iowa's Iowa the only team I don't want to play if we're being. Transcript. Iowa? Yeah. They break us. I don't know why. They somehow score well, 80 against us every time. You're welcome. You don't have to play Iowa. Yeah. You're Take welcome. care of <laughs> We did that for you. <laughs> um, the big the garden was awesome, man. The guard being over there is uh uh I think I talked to Steve a little bit about it, but uh you know, we had Fanta on and 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 talked to him about it and I I don't know. I I, I can't say enough about how awesome the Big East tournament is. Um it it's the the electricity that's in that place before the the Providence Yukon game it was it was nuts i i tried to meet a couple friends from fox who uh were stepping away from uh their work duties i won't name names but they were like hey meet meet me at, meet me up here at the concourse level and let's have a few beers together before this game tips off and i tried to go meet him and it was just absolute pandemonium just like the the so many fans, so loud, so drunk. There was a fight between Providence and UConn fans. The cops had to, um, I, guess, I guess they arrested would be the word I'm looking for, uh, some people that were fighting in the concourse before the game even tipped off. This is what I got. Like, what time did the game tip off? Like 2.30 oh, or that, something? Yeah. <laughs> On a Thursday? In the middle of the day. Mm-hmm. That's Big East basketball. Yeah, it was it was, it was incredible. Uh, it was a, I, I didn't go to the uh, Creighton-Villanova game tonight because we had to record, so um, – I can't speak to that environment, but I'm really fired up about tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. So 
um yeah it was, it was it's been a, it was it's been a great day of hoops and i don't i don't know how much we really need to talk about because most people listening like already friday's probably already started but um i guess we can talk about the, the teams that lost and the teams that are dead which is like north carolina um that's kind of a big story never in the history of the sport has the number one team uh entering the season missed the ncaa tournament and them and and nova final yeah, four final teams four, missing the tournament you have outright. two final four teams that missed the tournament outright um villanova i feel a little worse for because villanova you started talking yourself into by the end of the season um the like justin moore gets healthy again and and uh they, they it felt like there towards the end they were starting to put the pieces together a little bit north carolina at no point in this season has looked like a good basketball team at no point the north carolina's entire like if you were talking yourself to North Carolina at any point in the season, it was because of what happened last year. There's they've shown no signs of life ever. They beat Virginia. That was like their one decent win, but even that was, uh, yeah. I mean, this Virginia team's not the greatest team in the world. So I I don't know. Like North Carolina has not looked like an NCAA tournament team at any point all season. Um. So the conclusion is not exactly a surprise, but. There, there always is, and the way I talked about Michigan, expecting Michigan to win the Big Ten tournament, um, just because you felt like you've seen that story before, because of last year with North Carolina, y- your brain said there's a 99.9% chance they're not going to flip the switch, but I don't know, what if, what if, what if, and tonight they did not, and it's over, and they're dead, and that's that, and I don't know. So like it's like, on the one hand, this is crazy that the number one team preseason didn't make the tournament. On the other hand, it's like, yeah, no shit, they've been this way the entire season, and we're not surprised at all. Brady so. Manic effect. Get Brady Manic an NBA contract. <laughs> Get Brady Manic an NBA contract. Uh, similarly, Jim Beheim retiring. So that happened uh, yesterday. Um, we have not done a show between – you know, between last show and now, uh, Bayheim is retired. I, the fact that he lost, we talked with Steve a little bit about Bayheim, but the fact that he lost in Greensboro on a last second shot, the fact that, uh, his post game press conference was, he was a little cantankerous and like, I mean, it, it, you could not have had a per, more perfect way for Jim Bayheim to go out. The fact that he called out Wake Forest a couple weeks ago and said they bought a team. Um, when Wake Forest has like no gr- good recruits on their team whatsoever, he like very clearly messed up what team he was talking about. Um, that all of these things happen, and the Wake Forest beats him at the buzzer in his least favorite city on planet Earth, and then he's like perfectly Jim Beheim in the post game press conference. It was it was all too perfect. But um, I was gonna say like that that was another deal that was kind of a surprise, but also not one because he's old as shit, and like at some point you knew this guy was gonna retire. Two, this has been, like, sort of rumored for a while that Bayheim was, like, I, I kind of expected it all year that he was going to announce his retirement. I remember at the start of the season there were rumblings that, like, this he was going to announce that he was going to do a farewell tour, but then he must not have decided to do it. And even the fact that he said um, my retirement speech was last week, which leads me to believe, like, he he's obviously has been planning this for a while, Um he just didn't really know how they they didn't really know how to go about it, and the way they delivered it was very very awkward. But um, I don't know. I thought I also heard at one point in time that Beheim wanted to retire last year. He was going into last year saying this is going to be my last year, and then K beat him to the punch and was like, "This is my last year." So then Beheim thought, "Well, shit, I'm not going to say you know I can't retire now." Um, <clears throat> man, losing my voice. Um, it's early. It's early in March. You can't be losing. I can't voice be doing yet. this right now. Um, so Bayhai, I I had heard that 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 was the plan. So like going into this year, it's like this is definitely going to be his life. I don't know, but then the same thing happens with every old coach. I mean, how many times does Tom Brady line up under center in Week One, and everyone's like, "This is the last opening game for Tom Brady. Enjoy it while you can, folks." And then he kept coming back, and then finally he retires, and everyone's like, "See, he called it." That it sort of felt like that with Bayhai, but anyway, long story short. Um, I exa- I wasn't exactly shocked. Uh, I I think there is a world in which he could have gotten. I I I do not want another farewell tour. Certainly, ever. I'd never want to see another one of those in my life. But it does feel a little unceremonious how he went out, Jim Beheim. But at the same time, like that's kind of what happens when you when you overstay your welcome. And and I think if he would have decided to retire five years ago, six years ago. 
uh, it it would have gone down a lot differently. But uh, it, it felt fitting the way he, he ended his career. It also I like guess. the way his demeanor was in the speeches almost sounded like he's not done. Or yeah, like, like he's like, not shutting like, the door. I don't know who's offering him. Well, I think it it sounds like maybe. Yeah, I mean, he's not leaving Syracuse. The guy grew up like a, an hour away. Went to school yeah. there, was an assistant there, and then became a head. Like, he's never lived anywhere else in his life. Um, so unless he's going to one of those tiny-ass schools, like Division II schools. Like, to, yeah, SUNY Albany or something. Yeah. Um, but I, I wonder, is he going to wait to see a, when Autry sucks? Yeah. And hey, then, guys. And then he's like, hey, look at me, and he pops out from yeah. around the corner like, Want to run it back? And everyone's like, I, no, remember, but... remember Mello? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You guys remember that? Um, the other big coaching news: Patrick Ewing fired. Uh, again, not shocking. Um, mildly surprising to me, only in that certainly not in his performance. Just mildly surprising in that, like I had kind of resigned myself to the fact that Georgetown was going to keep him around as long as he wanted to stay around. Like they, I felt like they could have fired him last year, and when they didn't do that, I thought. All right, so they're just very obviously don't want to like, you know. It, it, I mean, it, it's like if Michael Jordan was the head coach of North Carolina. Like, if you fire him now, you're cutting off like yeah. this whole era of like who you. It, it just becomes like a cultural civil war almost amongst the program. So I thought, all right, they're not going to fire him for that reason, and they're going to hope that eventually he's just going to step down. Um, so I guess that that's the surprising part is that they finally grew a pair and said, "Sorry, Patrick." Thanks, but no thanks. We do not want your services anymore. Um, where they go from here is going to be fascinating. Everyone's throwing out Patino's name, which they will for every single high major job that comes open, um, because why wouldn't you? <laughs> um, Mike Bray is an obvious choice. He's from the D.C. area. He retired from – quote. he retired, quote, unquote, and then two days later, was like, I didn't say I retired. I said I'm done at Notre Dame. Which is <laughs> there, crazy. Which so. is crazy for him to say that, uh, which makes people think that maybe he's going back to D.C. area to take over Georgetown. Micah Shrewsbury is a name that continues to get steam. He feels like the other name that, like, every time a job comes up, he's going to be mentioned for it. Um, which, like, people who know – I mean, I talked to Ant Wright about it when we did our little Big Ten thing. Like, people who know Shrewsbury – know exactly why he's so such a hot commodity people who don't are thinking like the penn state guy right, what what yeah. has he done what has he won um but everyone in the big 10 knows how smart this dude is how many plays he's he's, he's an x and o genius um he's just like the nicest dude he's gonna kill it recruiting uh it's just a matter of time with him and he's got penn state penn state winning today gets him back in the tournament for the first time since i think 2011 they're gonna make it. Yeah, they're gonna make it in. Um, and they're so fun. I, did you see uh Underwood, and uh, I forget who was it Coleman Hawkins on Illinois. Um, they were bitching about uh Jalen Pickett playing booty ball was the quote. Uh, Underwood said uh. Underwood said that Jalen Pickett, like Jalen Pickett, just ba basically backs people down and then waits for a double team and then kicks it out to a shooter and that's that's Penn State's offense. Yeah. And then if he doesn't get double teamed, he just scores. Um. And Brad Underwood lost his mind in the post-game press conference and said, when Jalen Pickett's playing booty ball, there's nothing we can do to stop him because he can just dribble and back his ass down on it. And I was, <laughs> booty ball is a great term for yeah, it, though. That seems like a, a coaching issue. Yeah, what, I know. What, what are you supposed to do about this guy playing this specific way? But it just feel, it feels like if Penn State's smart, they like take that and run with it and like make booty ball shirts. Booty ball shirts, so, yeah. yeah. NIL like, deal. Yeah, NIL deal for booty ball, dude. So, um. Yeah, Georgetown will be fascinating. Like I said, St. John's, I think people expect to come open. We do not have, as of this recording, we do not have word on, on you know, Mike Anderson has not been fired yet, but um, I think most people think he's going to eventually. Um, and then the other coaching news is Chris Beard to Ole Miss feels like it's happening, which the second Texas let Chris Beard go, um, and then the, the charges got dropped. I mean, anyone with, with – multiple brain cells knew that this man was going to resurface somewhere uh whether you like it or not like this is the current climate of college sports where it's like i don't know anything goes i guess if you can coach it if you can coach a ball team you can, you can find your way back to the sideline um and if he's going to come back he's going to come back to an sec school and Ole Miss, <laughs> Ole Miss makes so much sense uh i i'm curious when they're going to announce that this is happening though because i think 
this has this reminds me of when Indiana fired Tom Crean. I'll never forget it. The Thursday, the opening Thursday of the NCAA tournament, the first game is getting tipped off, and I swear to God, Indiana was like hovering over the button, waiting for the ball to go in the air. It was it, it, that was the one shiny moment. Is the ball is tipped? Yeah. Tom Crean is fired. <laughs> and the second the ball got tipped, they hit the fired button, and they did that because. Uh, they they knew that like no it was gonna just slide like no one was gonna talk about it everyone's now watching the basketball games and everyone like I I remember when it happened I was like ah shit Tom Crean was fired I guess I'll talk about that later but like I'm locked in on the games and then by the time it comes time to talk about it you're like well I don't it's uh, that was three weeks ago I don't really care anymore yeah, and then you just kind of you bury yeah you bury it I think that's what Ole Miss is waiting on I think on Thursday the first game's gonna get tipped and then they're gonna say we hired Chris, oh by the, by the, they're like whisper it yeah. by, the, by the way we hired Chris Beard. Okay, anyway, enjoy the NCAA tournament, everybody. <laughs> Maybe they wait for the moment Texas is either knocked out of or wins oh. the Big 12 tournament. Mm. It's like, hey, you won. They, they troll. And, um, yeah, got, by the way. We hired, we hired, we hired Chris Barron. Nobody paid attention to this. <laughs> Congrats to Texas. Um, Yeah, that's – that's but I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't know if I love this move for Chris Beard, by the way, which I don't – I don't know. He, 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 I, I, I really – I say this, um, I, I'm I'm not proud to say it. Like I I just I I do think he could have gotten a better job. Like I that I don't. It sucks that that's the reality that we live in. But I I really think like he could have taken a year off and then <laughs> got a much better job because everyone would have forgotten and everyone would have not cared anymore. And that's just you know that's a sad reality we live in. I guess. But um, I'm just excited. Uh, you haven't interacted in person with Ben Mintz yet. I'm excited to see his spin zone on how he celebrates this hiring without doing anything offensive. Because <laughs> he's going to be like, of course, he's going to be jacked up. Of course, of course. Um, I asked, I asked uh, Brandon if if we should have Mincy on the show if Beard goes if Beard Ole Miss goes official, and he goes, if Ole Miss hires Ben Mintz to be the head coach, you should not have Ben Mintz on your show. <laughs> So I guess that won't be happening, or else Brandon will, uh, yeah, Brandon will kill us. Brandon will, will will bang down the door and and turn the show off. So, um, yeah, that's about it. I don't know. There, there was a ton of, like I said, there's a ton of games we could have talked about. Um, with I, I, Clemson playing their way back into the bubble conversation, certainly fascinating. Clemson has some terrible, terrible losses, but it's it's just a been a weird that 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 is a perfect way to to explain what kind of college basketball year it has been. Is that the Big Ten is not even that good, and Wisconsin was the 12 seed in the Big Ten tournament and somehow was still in position to make the NCAA tournament had they not lost to Ohio State in the first round of the Big Ten tournament as a 12 seed and a not great conference. Meanwhile, Clemson was a three seed in the ACC, and only just now by, by beating the hell out of NC State are they sort of back on the bubble. I still don't think they're going to make it, but they're back in the discussion, and if they – beat Virginia maybe they're in I don't know I don't I, I don't know I'm not a bracketologist I don't know how people I don't know how people do this um it sucks that it, it feels like nobody respects any bracketologists anymore by the way yeah. like there's not a there's not a single guy that's like respected anymore like if 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 I I don't even know whose name to mention if I if I mentioned Lenardi if I was yeah, like yeah. I, I just looked up Lenardi says he has Clemson out we would get a t uh, just a flood of tweets at us like dude who gives a shit what Lenardi thinks he doesn't know shit the real guy you got to listen to it <laughs> you know and it, it dawned on me there's like nobody that people like yeah there's, there, there's kind of like there's not like a <laughs> also like they, they um, what bothers me is that all day every commercial break every media timeout they come back with like the bubble watch yeah but and it's the same it's one the same that was one. released like wednesday at at 11 a.m and like 30 teams have gotten knocked out of the, the conversation <laughs> since then but it's still like oh Rutgers and mississippi state are on the bubble i'm like i think we're gonna be okay yeah, i think i think it's gonna be all right yeah you guys are definitely in yeah. on, on my bracketology i have i have Rutgers definitely in i have mississippi state probably in too unfortunately but on my they, bracketology they i have ohio state in so. let's go let's go tj <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Nobody wants to see the Buckeyes hot. That's all I'm saying. Um, what else? What else? What else happened today that I'm missing? That uh, I, I mean, um, DePaul almost did something. Amazing. DePaul, yeah, that would have been something. That that, <laughs> that like I said, like that about St. John's. That felt like a perfect DePaul 
the, the today in the Big East tournament felt like DePaul and St. John's personified. Like that is who these programs are. Is like they can they can give you enough to get excited about possibly maybe turning yeah. a corner, but they will never turn that corner yeah. ever unless they hire Rick Pitino. Both of them at the same time. <laughs> That's the only hope they have. Rick Pitino Who's, in Chicago with us. Who is uh, DePaul's head coach? I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. I challenge all of you listening, without looking it up. I wish Brandon was here. He's the trivia guy. Yeah. I would ask him, who is DePaul's head coach? Name anyone associated with DePaul, Brandon Wolf. Yeah, yeah. Just Anybody. Who, name one player. One co- name one player in the last fifteen years. Yeah. DePaul. Name name one head coach in the last ever, <laughs> other than Ray Meyer. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> Um, all right, well, let's just get to the interviews. Uh, we got Stanford Steve. We got uh, Joe Gallo, head coach of Merrimack, um, coming up. Uh, yeah, back-to-back. Here you go. Stanford Steve is here uh, heading to the Big East Tournament. We're recording this uh, Thursday before Thursday morning before the action on Thursday at the Big East Tournament. So Steve gets, uh, gets drunk and unruly and gets kicked out, and it's all over social media. This was prior. That this man was, yeah, this was prior, so that's why we didn't talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you said that this is like your favorite day. It's up, yeah. Are, are you one of those guys that's like conference tournament week is better than the first yes. week of March Madness? Why is yes. that? Why is I it? feel like you ask me that every I'm, year. I'm willing to, to hear out the, change. I'm willing to hear because the argument. I just don't know if I agree. There's no 116s. We, don't, we got that out of it, okay? okay. I, know, I know you're – Virginia squad took it on the chin a couple <laughs> years ago, and it's not the same ever since. Uh, but I just feel like, like now with I, the word that keeps coming back is capability. There's so many more capable teams because of transfer portal, COVID year, uh, just guys hanging around, and I feel like the bubble the last couple years, the committee. It feels like the committees are like they're it's already set. Because in years past, the conference tournaments, teams haven't been rewarded. Yeah. A&M goes to the conference final last year. They think they're in. They don't get in. And I feel like the committee already has their mind set up going in the conference week. So, I feel like the onus is really on to win the conference tournament. As it always is, but I think the emphasis so is more. So, you're, you're saying it's more interesting because a team like my beloved Buckeyes have to win five in a row to win. And you, yep. Yeah. And, like, okay. Because you're kind of talking me the other, you you're, you're kind of the way you're setting up that argument was actually against conference tournaments where you're like the committee has, has already made no, up their mind so none of the shit no, matters. No, I, see, I yeah, no, I see what you're saying, but no, it's it's just I like I said in the familiarity with the teams, like you're gonna you got a lot of times teams are gonna play a team thir- three times, you know, so it's like oh man, like yeah, everybody's favorite saying hard to beat a team three yeah, times in a year, yeah, yeah. it happens, but. There's a lot more pressure, man. Yeah. You know, a tournament at stake. Uh, you know, you get teams. I, I think Syracuse is is one, like, that close yesterday. But you get a team that has, you know, one of those zones in a, in a one-and-done format, man. That, that has just been so different. You got guys have an off-night shooting. How do you respond? Because that's the key in March. You got to win a game when you don't play well. Yeah. And, team, yeah. and, and, and and teams, they just can't do it time and time again. We've seen top teams drop from it, and then we've seen these these younger teams or these teams that haven't been healthy all year gain this confidence, and as the stakes get higher, they play better, and it's just awesome to see. You're a basketball guy. I, 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 I've never understood this. Like, every time I talk to you about, like, uh, you know, your, your background, mm. it, it, it confounds me as to why you – became a football guy like you're you were you were a great basketball player you obviously love basketball i do what the hell happened steve why why did why did the football people <laughs> get their you claws hate that. in you, you i hate, hate that, that. You like, hate why it. why did you not why did you not go the basketball it, yeah route? it was it was we were done growing <laughs> there was the, the, we saw the finish line you looked line. around and we you're saw like, the finish line at hoops you were watching nfl games you're watching nba games yeah. you're like which one has more six Four white guys. No, mm. it was, you know, you're a senior, and then there's freshmen coming in from other cities. You're like, oh, yeah, Jim Calhoun's looking at him. I'm like, oh, he should be. Do you, is basketball – you you like basketball more than football, though, don't no. you? Say it. No. All right. No. I'm not going to get that there. All right. We'll, we'll cut that. All right. Um, you, you, why, why the Big East tournament? Why are you here for the Big East tournament if you're a uh, – if you're a Stanford guy, why aren't you? Out it, it was the it was the thing to do. Like I came back from college in 2000. 
you know, my buddies, you know, started, you know, that didn't go to college, had money in their pocket. And it was, it was the guy's getaway, you know, Mm -hmm. before guys had, you know, were wifed up or had girlfriends. Uh, I was fortunate. My brother lived in the city when I was out of college. So as I didn't have to partake in the four guys in a hotel room, yeah. I had my brother's place where I could get away from the madness late at night. I was here for the ball. Uh, obviously, there's plenty that comes in between the games, but it was just you know the rise of UConn happened when I was in you know right as I was in middle school. Like yeah. I, I saw it was overnight, 1990. I can remember like it was yesterday. Uh, you know Tate George hits the shot and. Games are, you know, Gamble gets built. Old season ticket holders that went to the old field house in, in stores get shut out because now more games are at Hartford. It's a corporate crowd. Students get, you know, left out a little bit because they got to take buses to games in Hartford, and it's a big deal. And, you know, the Big East, ESPN, that contract, I mean, it just – it's so simultaneous. It's crazy to see the rise of that. But – that's why, I mean, I've seen UConn own the garden, and, and, and it, I, I'm hoping you could come today to see I'll it. I'll be there. I'll it be is. There. I, saw that, I saw that last year UConn thought they were going to own the garden last no, year. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? this, I, I will I say, I don't want to take shots. It is different that that Fox has, has yeah. the Big East tournament. Well, how is it different? You don't, I mean, well, McDonough, Billis, and Raftery, come on. There was nothing better than those guys calling the night games. Nothing better. But McDonough, does he do basketball anymore? No. Yeah. So, I, like, yeah. So I, I mean, yeah, even if ESPN had it, it wouldn't be those guys. Like the, you know, they would, they would still be doing it. You think they'd still yes. be doing it? Yes. <laughs> so, it's that yeah. big a deal. That big a deal. It's, it's, it's that good. You, so, you will see it. They have all the teams they want uh, tonight. I think Villanova at night is huge. Talking about a team that. Yeah. If they could have hit a fast forward button from the beginning of the season, all right, we're yeah. gonna have more at healthy at the end of the year. Let's get to the garden. Let's be in the Big East tournament, and then we'll take a shot. There with is that. something about that Big East tournament bracket. The second you see it, you're like Villanova has a path. Yeah, doesn't matter how good they are. And doesn't matter. You're just like, uh oh. And uh oh, <laughs> teams hate it. You know, uh, I, I just think as a Xavier and Creighton, like Creighton's yeah. gonna be they every, and that's the that's what's cool about the Big East. Like today, you got St. John's and UConn, right? If St. John's is in that game with Marquette, UConn's cheering for St. John's. Yeah, yeah. And and tonight, yeah, the whole building's rooting for Villanova. So what's the sorry Creighton? Nice story. Well, I was gonna, but I you're was gonna say, Omaha. what's the what's the pecking order of uh, like like is is UConn the Duke of the Big East? Because it felt that way last year. They where are like, now. Like are nobody, now. no other Big East team is gonna ever cheer for UConn under any circumstances. That, uh, yeah. I, I think you, Do you think, that. but then I felt like Villanova People should feel sorry for St. John's because they've been so bad. I feel like Villanova should be that though. Villanova should be the team that even though Villanova is the underdog in this tournament, like you have to have PTSD if you're every other Big East school where you're like, I don't give a shit if they're the six seed and Creighton's the three. If I'm watching that game tonight, I do not want I do not want Villanova to win. They've won too much. I like, think I need, I need a little more from Nova. All right, a little more. All right, UConn run has been what a. We, we this is this is a very self aware comment, so don't 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 interpret this as a shot. Um, we both have like twelve teams we love, like in terms of like yeah. you're 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 known publicly as Stanford Steve. Yeah. It's literally in your name, and yet you're like a UConn guy. Yet you I, love Duke. Yet you love. So what is the? I'm and actually, again, this isn't a I'll shot. I'll tell you right now. Is, no, no, no. This is the me other too. Team is I'm, Ohio State. You like Ohio I, State? I, I do. I I've uh. Well, I was trying to do the math. Was it 2012? That brutal loss in Newark to uh, Kentucky and Brandon Knight. That was 2011. Yeah, uh, last game of the day. There. It I tipped off at like 10:19 p.m. or 10:50. Yeah, it's probably probably 10:50. It was. Oh um, man, that was brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. Yeah, I. Uh, that that was the first year after I graduated. Favorite Ohio my, State team besides when you were there. Uh, Sullinger's team blows the lead in the Final Four in New Orleans. Yeah, just wanted to see them get a shot at Kentucky. Couldn't get it done. I I objectively think that. Uh, uh, Ohio State basketball is a fun program to root for because, but but no one will ever get because like the football program is so easy to hate and and it's such a bit so well, like people well, there's just so many people see Ohio State and they're like I'm out on Ohio State but if you actually I because I feel this way about Notre Dame too they're like I hate Notre Dame football team but like Mike Bray's basketball program oh, was so fun to yes, cheer for no doubt but people like every time I would say that on my show they'd be like I can never cheer for Notre Dame and I get that I understand that mm-hmm. but some of these football programs. Their basketball teams are actually super fun, and I felt like, yep. I feel like Ohio State should be that way, but I'm, people can't get there. They hate Ohio State. Yeah, and I think they put so much in the football season. Yeah, you know, just your own fan base. Yeah, and I still go back. It was I saw you that night that uh, Ohio State 
Wisconsin Big Ten title game, football game. We were in Indy. Yeah. And me and my buddy, we were doing post game uh, for Scott after the game. So we had all afternoon go out. And I remember, let's, I was like, let's go. Nice day out in Indy. You don't get those a lot in December. <laughs> I get those a lot. <laughs> we're walking around. Every place has a line outside the door. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? Ohio State basketball game at noon against Penn State. That's right. And yeah. I'm like, these people, they just – I'm like, the game's at 8. You got to start at noon. I think that's what it might be is uh, if you're a fan of, of – of, if, you're, if you're like a fan of all college sports, you meet the Ohio State football fans. And then when basketball season rolls around, you say, I know that those same people are cheering for the basketball program, and I want them to be miserable, so I'm not going to cheer for the basketball program. <laughs> but, like, if you just objectively – if you paid zero attention to football and only followed basketball – Ohio State basketball, I do feel like we're a fun program because we play like a fun style. No we're, doubt. We're, we're, we don't win enough to where you're, especially this year, to where you would hate us because we're always mm-hmm. on top. But we're always close enough to be competitive. I don't know. We got like the so right have combination. the evil empire of, of the football program we have the, yeah. hanging over you. So what's your time. hierarchy? Stanford, if, if, all your t- if all 12 of your teams are playing in a tournament, uh, again, that's not, that's not a sh- <laughs> it sounds like a shot, but I'm in the same boat. I love, I love all the teams I love, um, and, and people – lose their minds at like how I pivot from team to team depending I, on who's good. I've only it was really hard once Casey Jacobson Stanford beat Duke in the Warriors arena. You're actually a Duke fan. Yeah. This isn't a joke. Yeah. I thought you were just trolling Dan and I every time no, we talk about this. No, no. And Dan, then I saw Dan you wearing I saw you wearing the Duke shirt the other night. <laughs> it's March. Got to got to go. Um it's Stanford Duke and everybody else. Not UConn? No. UConn's not even so you don't care if UConn loses to Providence today. That doesn't, doesn't bother, bother you at all. No, really. I like to razz my buddies. Interesting, interesting. I don't it's find... it's good to have them in the mix though. Like, yeah. When they weren't, I mean, even the conference too. When they were down, it was just it's just not the same. They they bring an element that is totally different. And what's crazy is those two runs with Kemba and and Shabazz, just like only they could pull those off. Yeah. Like I was going through the metrics this year. Uh, guy Gil Alexander out in Vegas did a, a great breakdown of the last 27 title teams. And they had like, he had like six criteria and three of the outliers were 2014. <laughs> yeah, UConn. Yeah. Like weren't even, it was like field goal percentage defense, uh, a coach that had sweet 16 or better experience. Mm-hmm. Kevin Alley didn't have any, <laughs> uh, and it was like field goal percentage offense. And they weren't like, it was, it might've been four criteria and that 2014 team just, um, so at, at, at any point in time, have you cared about it? like was there was there a moment where you like pivoted away from caring about UConn? Were you, like, cause you, it when I went like, to school, it was different because like watching them, then that's when they got really good. Uh, but when you were growing up, you cared about UConn, or was it just like a team that? No, nah, like, my dad was a big UConn fan, and yeah. he might have chased me out of the house when Leitner <laughs> made the shot. That was that was. So you've been that, Duke forever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Why? Explain that. You're a nice guy. You're like you're like a you're you're a good dude, Steve. I, like I don't understand how this happens. I, I don't understand. The the first you're just one a contrarian. You just want to be an I, asshole in school. Is that it? I remember Georgetown, uh, Villanova. I don't remember Valvano, but like one of the from start to finish, I remember never nervous beating Duke and that team. You in eighty six, Johnny Dawkins, all yeah, and uh, you know. Um, Bills is on that team, Mark Allery, and just really liking it. I remember watching them that year and just really liking it. And uh, that is that fair. Is... You're a little older. Like once upon a time, Duke was a fun up and coming yeah. program. That uh, yeah, like Indiana and Duke kind of like Knight and, and there... K, K took Knight's mantle from him mm-hmm. in 1992. Um, that was sort of because yeah, Indiana was really good. Damon Bailey, yeah, 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 and that was sort of the the Calvert shifting Cheney, of the right? Blue Bloods. So yeah, that makes sense. I guess I guess you're a little older than I am older you than got, you. That's yeah. that's you know you could. But bring, like, yeah, I know you don't want to bring it up. I know, but, I but every, that. everybody my age. Uh, oh, you got no chance. But like my age, you know, Duke has already been established. Like I I remember watching '92. That was in uh that was uh, or '91 was in in Indy in Indianapolis. Um, '92 yes. was in Minnesota, Minneapolis. right? Yeah. Yep. Um. But I remember the the uh, I, I I was old enough to remember ninety one like the I, I I you know I remember when Duke won it I was four Mark years Randall's old. mullet yeah. for Kansas yeah that was the uh, Grant Hill caught the lob yep. and the Bad hair um cut. but most of the people my age when they think of like getting into college but when you're like in your formative years Duke had already been established 
and Duke was already hated and Duke was already, you know, and like the, the, the 99 to like that late nineties, early two thousands run. If you're a Duke fan, you're a piece of shit. Like in my school. <laughs> you know? It's funny. I was you know at, I mean? <laughs> like, my brother and I were at the 99 game. He's rooting for UConn. All his guys are rooting for UConn. I'm the only, we had unbelievable seats right behind the bench. I'm the only guy rooting for Duke. <laughs> it was a tough night. Tough night, but we had an awesome night afterwards because all – I mean, it was just random UConn guys coming in yeah. from Connecticut that flew in on Monday for the game. I know it was in the Rays Stadium, but the setup of Tampa for the Final Four was awesome. Like out on the beach on Sunday, it was incredible. That's right. They, they was, had that in Tampa. It was really, really good. Ohio State was in it. They'll never do that. They'll Remember never... Scooney, uh, Scooney Penn? Scooney Penn, yeah, from, uh, Lost his jersey. Oh, yeah. He had to yeah. wear a different number. That's right. And they beat a great St. John's team in the lead eight. And then the reason I was there was Stanford went to the final four the year before. My roommate was the captain of that team. So we might have bet ahead a little bit. Uh, they could, the, they could yeah. go. And then Stanford got matched up against Gonzaga in Seattle. And Gonzaga was a 10. Stanford was the two. They're they're never going to do that. With fine. That's, that's kind of sad. I mean, I, I like that they figured out, like, the sites that are good and – We'll just cycle through those, but I hate this football stadium shit. That like, like I was talking I, to Brandon Walker, who works here. Uh, um, he's a Mississippi State guy, oh yeah, so he, he doesn't. He, he never shuts the fuck up about 1996 because that's the only time Mississippi uh, State ever did. Yeah, it. but we, that was we, in New Jersey. In New Jersey, yeah. yeah. We were talking about that, and it's like that'll. That, they're not gonna have a like they've had. They had Final Fours. East the 90s Rutherford. And, and East Rutherford. Their best days are past. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, it's crazy, and now it's just like you're the same I, Houston and, and New Orleans and India. I mean, I, I, India and New Orleans are awesome. Yeah, and they're great. But I, I just the idea where you can walk everywhere is the best. Yeah, but I also think like the NCAA has more money than anybody. Why wouldn't they just build a facility in San Diego? This is the Final Four every year. That's a great idea. Like, <laughs> why not? Idea. It's a, you, you have my attention. That's a that's a. Uh, I mean, your roots now are in California. Still, I know. So sorry. To- Moving to Chicago though, Steve. I know. Do you think I'm going to get? Fat? Are you good with the time change? I I think it's going to be a great. Have time, you adjusted? I, uh, I I I actually I hate I love watching football on the West Coast. I hate watching basketball on the West Coast. I hate the like four four p the yeah, three thirty the Big East games will tip off at six thirty Eastern, so it's three thirty where I live. That's brutal. That's what, absolutely brutal. Um, what'd you do with your surfboards? <laughs> they're still on my balcony. <laughs> I got two of them. Ask me how many time I, times I've used them. <laughs> Flip flops. They got dust on them yet. Um, I, I, fo- football is awesome though on the West coast, right? Waking I, up at 9 a.m. for college football. That's the only, I, t- the only I, time I hate it is when it's Ohio State, Michigan, and I oof. the 9 a.m. kick when it's like I gotta be I'm I gotta be ready for war at 9 a.m. That's yeah, a little early. That's early. But when I'm just rolling out of bed and throwing on like a random ass Big Ten game at, at a noon kick, that's perfect. I'm the, making some eggs and drinking some coffee. The, the worst was being in college out there though, for like for NFL, because like even the Sunday night game, it's over at eight, and you're like, oh shit. That's, that's true. Yeah, I, I gotta do work now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's what kind of sucked a little. And bit. if you're a little hungover on the the Sunday morning, maybe that's you got not, no chance. Yeah, you got no chance. You're of, missing those yeah. ten a.m. Um, I'm ex- I'm fired up for Central Time though. I think that'll be perfect. I don't it's know. the best time. I've, zone. I've never lived in Central. Best time, time zone for sports. Yeah, that one hour better than the Eastern Time Zone makes all the difference in the world. Uh, a lot of chatter that I'm gonna get fat again when I move back to the It'd Midwest. Be good to see. Yeah. Yeah, P- I, I, I like people have like a visceral reaction to seeing me now. I found like especially now that I've come to Barstool and, um, you know, yeah, we're pumping out like videos just- and clips and everything. People like lose their minds at how skinny I am. <laughs> they're, like they're like fucking angry. <laughs> it's like the number one thing. There's like a pool <laughs> around the office. Hey, you have you're to go ask Mark. <laughs> you have to go ask Mark if he's eating lunch today. Yeah, dude. <laughs> So I feel like I feel like uh, it's just gonna naturally happen when I when I get back to the Midwest, but I don't know. I, mm. I don't. I, I don't know. We'll see. Question for you: If we had a snake draft, me and you, yeah, teams to win the national title, who you def- we can do you it. Get, you, you got wanna, first pick. You just want to do it right now? Oh wow! We, okay. we can just do it. Like we don't have to hypothetically do it. We can we can just do all it. Right, you go first. I don't the have next two. Okay, so uh, first of all, before we start, yeah. for the people listening and not watching this. Um, Steve has a has a note card. So Steve came prepared. So this is kind of a, I bring kind it of, everywhere uh, with me in March. This just is so kind you know. Of, the, lest anyone thinks that he just came up with this idea off the dome, he like researched all. He put all his notes together and he sat down here as I have no notes and I'm, I I don't even remember. I don't have any notes. I have <laughs> teams written <laughs> okay, down. All right. I do it the first week of February every year. All right, I just scroll um, through teams that can win. I'll let, the I'll let you title. take first pick since you're the guest. Uh, I knew you were gonna do this. Um. 
I went and saw Houston in person mm-hmm. two weeks ago in East Carolina. I love them. There's just something that's different. I don't think this is their best team. Doesn't have but to be. Like, I know. Doesn't have to be. You got to be better that's than. What, you know, in, in, in college basketball, it seems like that's how it works sometimes. Mm-hmm. You get these teams that are hype, and it's like the guys that trickle down, hang around. Uh, Samson came on the show the other night. They've had four new starters three years in a row. That's crazy. Wait, really? Yeah, because he's the starters are like you know he they've played a ton, but yeah, he's had four. Four. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Uh mm. So you're, you're out on Houston. It's about the matchups, man. <laughs> I, I I I hate doing this before what? the bracket. What? I hate it. You're the uh, one that brought it up. I know. Um, <laughs> and the Clark injury kills me because I would take UCLA. If I knew, if I knew Clark, yeah, was I, I agree with you. Actually, I, I, uh, I, I, I think UCLA was. Uh, when we we did the Pac-12 tournament preview earlier this week, I said that uh, you just kind of waiting. You were waiting all season. You 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 felt like UCLA might be the best team, but unfortunately, the Pac-12 stinks. So you're they you're kind of like questioning what are they going to look like when they play like an actually awesome team. And, and everybody then, just brings up what the, you know them getting beat by Illinois and the in, yeah you know. And Illinois would have beat anybody in the country that night in Vegas with the way Shannon played in that game. But then the way they played against Arizona, you're like, yep, okay, I've seen it. Yeah. They, they are the best team. And then, yeah, Clark's out now. And um, Alabama cloud, I, I just I can't take them first overall. Okay, uh, so this is a great draft so far. Yeah, this is, I'll, uh, we've, I'll <laughs> stick with it. I'll say I'll take UCLA. You'll take UCLA? Yep. I'm taking Houston. I think Houston uh, – I felt like Houston was the best team coming into the season. Um, I felt like they've been the best team, but well, they've lost two games, right? And the two games they've lost were, uh, they were up on Bama and, and Trayvon Mark fouls out mm-hmm. with like 12 minutes left. Yeah. And then they just let their foot off the gas. Like they, they, I, Temple? I, I specifically remember the play T- Temple was, they were just fucking around and they're like, we got them right. We're like, we'll just, yeah. we'll just hit, we'll, we'll, we're fine. Whatever. We'll just kind of, they were playing with their food and then they kind of <laughs> ran out of time. <laughs> they're like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> Bama, I remember the play. Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Juwan uh, does like a fake handoff. He does the Draymond with Steph Curry. Yep. Fake handoff at the top of the key. Takes one dribble. Hammer dunk. The bench is going crazy. Like it puts Houston up like 9 or 11 or something with however much time left. And they're like, that's it. That's the dagger. But there's way too much time left. This is against Bama. Yep. And then – they they then Bam they kind of stopped playing and then Bama came back and beat him. But anyway, like the I'm not saying the loss doesn't count, but I remember watching that thinking like Bama's not necessarily better than Houston. Like Houston just kind of was fucking around. Yep. And and I felt that so I'm not saying they should be undefeated. I'm saying I felt like they were the best team at the start of the year. All season, I've not really seen anything to cause panic. Now, granted, they're not playing in a great conference. They don't play a great schedule, but that's part I of think it. I think they're very good. All right. You and got, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even buying into the hometown thing. Do you think that's going to help them or hurt them? Because I actually think that might be a distraction I, to have it in your hometown. Not with him coaching, I don't think. Okay, I, I think that's a huge deal um, with him knowing that they've been able to look it in the eye all year. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's it's not something that's sprung upon them where hey, you know, somebody got beat, so now we're going there. Yeah, it's, we might. It's yeah, been the the goal all they, season from the start of the season. They've known that this is. And what's, Jim Nance's last Final Four, uh, no, too? That, uh, no. that would be nuts. That would be nuts. I was happy he showed up to do a Houston game last week before uh, Did, uh, the tournament started. Did UCLA beat Houston one year, like but way back in the five slam and jam it, right? Or was that was before oh, yeah. that? It was, yeah. Well, that was the biggest crowd ever, right? Was that the game? Yeah. Yeah. UCLA-Houston would be a hell that of a – That was in Astrodome. That would be a hell of a um, title game. So, what, I get another pick? Yeah. Kansas. All right. It's I'll, Kansas. I, it's got to be Kansas. I'll take Alabama. Okay. And you're not looking at your card. What know. is the card? <laughs> if you're not, huh? What is the card? All my teams. Okay. What What does that mean? What do you mean all your teams? All like, my teams that can win a national title. There's 20. 20 teams you think can win yeah. a national title? I had 23. You, you, mar- you I, marked I eliminated so three. <laughs> St. Mary's out, Tennessee out, how Providence many, out. How, how many Big Ten teams are on that list? Let me guess. <laughs> there's one two. very 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 three. optimistic do you three. have three you have three i have three it's purdue yep it's indiana yep and it's michigan state it is 
Look at you. Yep. Look at you. It is. This I man still, knows ball. <laughs> I, I just I, I feel like I, I like them to win the Big Ten tournament, actually. Um all right, so I got Alabama and I I'll take Texas. Ooh. That's sneaky. Texas Texas was uh all right, all right. Um who does that leave me with? I guess that's it. I guess that's the that to me, like that's the line. That's the end of the teams that can win the national. <laughs> no. Um There's plenty more. You know who I'm slowly talking myself into is Gonzaga. It's it's Scott and I have talked about it a bunch on our pods the last couple of weeks because it does feel like we were talking about best teams usually, you know, they the hype is too much and they never get there. They don't have any pressure. They're not going to get to the two they line. Yeah. They're going to be a three. They're going to be – and, I mean, say what you want. They're still going to be a pain in the ass because they got score. They got eight guys that could score. Yeah. You know? I mean, they played their – they're coming off their best game they played all season against St. Mary's yeah, the other they, night. Yes, I mean, they yes. were phenomenal uh, the other night. So. so, to your point about, like, you don't know if – you said that about Houston, right? You don't know if this is, like, their best team that Correct. they've had. This is definitely not Gonzaga's best team. No. Not even close. No, to no. The, and, 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 obviously, Gonzaga's never won a title. But you don't have to be like that's what'll fuck you up when you like think about like where these teams are like who's who can win at all because you don't have to be the best team you don't have to be better than the teams you've had the last few years you have to be better six nights in in March slash April yep. than the team in front of you that's all it is and when you think about it that way it'll drive you crazy so to your point I want to see a bracket too I'm hitting the eject button on the draft <laughs> all right <laughs> I'm out I'm out well I started looking at the rest of the list and I'm like it is it is I mean Houston. I would say, like... You like Creighton a lot. I do like Creighton a lot. I don't you like Creighton more than UConn? <sighs> for for Big East National Champion, I, I think... Um, I said this the other day, like, th- there have been... F- th- there are four... The top four in the Big East, I think, are better. Th- like, I think there's a huge drop-off between UConn and Providence. We'll find out tonight. Like, Providence yeah. might beat them, but in terms of, like, national title caliber, like, I don't I think agree. it's close. Um but of those top four, and and they've been up and down, or you know, the, the, at different times, all four of them have looked like the best team in the Big East. I think when UConn was at their best, it looked to me better than any of the other three no have looked doubt. at their best. So for that reason, I want to believe in UConn. I don't trust Tristan Newton that much to do it six times. Like that. That's the other part too. Is you look at UConn, and as you said earlier, with Kimba and Shabazz, and um, they they kind of have when you see that uniform on that stage, you think that has to follow a certain formula yeah. and this team does not follow that formula. Ipso facto, I don't want to believe in them, but that's kind of an irrational way to look at it at the same time. It, 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 it gives me like a, a baby Okafor Ben Gordon feel yeah, because of Hawkins and Sonogo. Like I know, mm-hmm. I know Sonogo has been there a ton, but Hawkins, like I keep thinking about him. I, I had a chance to watch him at the math in high school living down there and I'm blown away by him. Like I saw he, him, he feels like he's gonna have a moment. In the I saw him play against just, Heels and yeah. PVI. Uh, PVI played the math. Uh, I think it was one hundred four, one hundred. The game was well in the middle of COVID. Like nobody in the gym. And it high was school a, game. High school game. Ball going in the bat. I think Hawkins had forty two. Keels had like thirty something. It was in. I couldn't believe. I'm like, this is a high school game. Yeah. And I'm I'm watching it like streaming on my computer. It's the only way you can watch it. <laughs> I'm like, this is incredible. You're a, you're a so sicko. Hawkins has been my, on my radar and. I just look at it like he's got some Hamilton in him because he runs for days. Yep. Uh, he's he's gotten a lot more fearless. He'll go to the rack, and if he hits those outside shots, I, and I, I look at this these couple days for him to take that yeah. step, and he's he could be the guy. So with that, you know, you go back to Okafor's Gordon. You know, Talik Brown was not a scorer. That's true. The point guard That's on true. Team. But That's he true. did all the shit nobody else so, wanted to do. We got to stop looking at the Kimba Shabazz model Correct. and go back to the yeah. Okafor Ben Gordon. The all really right. talented you got. <laughs> yeah, the team that had. <laughs> the team that beat The team Duke that had the best player in the country, the team that had another top yeah. whatever pick. Um, yeah, I, I like Creighton a lot, but uh, I, I uh, my mind goes. I was in Maui for uh, Maui Invitational. Creighton yeah. loses um, in the in the championship game, and I walked away from it thinking like this team is really really freaking good. They might have the best starting five in the country. Um, don't love their bench, but I, I don't think they're terrible. They're just like it's an obvious drop off. No, but uh, two guys. I can't. I cannot get Ryan Kalkbrenner out of my head uh, against Arizona. They're down three, I think it was in the championship. They draw up a play. Um, and, and Kalk gets the ball wide open from three, pump fakes, takes it one dribble inside the three-point line, and then goes, fuck, we're down three. 
I needed to shoot that. Yeah. And then picks the ball up, and I think, I don't know. It, it just I, like I just see that, and I think maybe they're not, they they can't handle the the. I'm not, I don't know if I don't know what it is. Are you soft? Or are you? I don't know what it was, but it was like that's basketball not, IQ. The basketball IQ. Like I, I, I just I'm scarred by that play. I'm scarred by that play. That like that that felt like a March moment, and mm-hmm. it just yeah, it just fell apart. So I don't know. And that it, was in November. That was in November. I can't get it out of my head. <laughs> I'll never forget it. I'll be talking about that on my show 15 mm. years from now. I'll be like, this reminds me of that Creighton. <laughs> <laughs> that Maui Invitational when, when Ryan Cockburner passed up the game tying three. Um, but no, their starting five is awesome. And I, I, yeah. I th- I'd really th- like to see McDermott do yeah, well. Yeah, same. In the NCAA and they, they play too. defense for the first time under a Mc- yeah. like It's one of the first mm-hmm. Creighton teams that's like not, not winning. afraid. Yeah, not afraid. Yeah, yeah. Bend your knees well, not, a little. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. The Big East is interesting, though. I want to talk myself into Marquette. They, I, I don't they just know feel if, like yeah. the ultimate overachiever all yeah. year. Yeah. Are you they know, a like good they, story or a good team? I don't know. Both, maybe, but both. Uh, I, I'm interested to see what they do this weekend. I mean, they're not even the favorite to win the tournament, but again, mm-hmm. that goes back to UConn being here, and you know, Creighton on the other side of the bracket. Uh, so I, I, I want to see what they do with the stakes a little bit higher in yeah. a tournament, you know, yeah. sense. So I think they benefit a lot from being that team in Milwaukee where nobody wants to go in the regular season. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. I, exactly. And they love it. Yeah. They should. Yeah. You know, it's, a, it's a good vibe to have. Xavier, too. Um, All right. So, wh- who else is on your list? Uh, go I through have, your list. I, I, I want to hear the list. I have one in the Mountain West. Uh, it, It's got to be San Diego. You're yeah. not putting Boise on there. No. You're not putting no. – yeah, it's got to be San Diego. One in the American, right? Houston. Houston. One in the West Coast Conference, Zags. Two in the Pac-12. Two in the Is ACC. It, two in the ACC are are Duke and Miami. No, Duke's not on the list. Whoa, whoa! And you don't have Carolina on the list. No. Okay, I, was, I didn't know if you're. I have your other favorite team, and I don't. Vir- I, Virginia. They they, sh- they might get crossed off before the bracket comes out because they they have been very very vulnerable. They they at at no point in time have I really. And I'm hanging on by a thread with Arkansas in the SEC. You have Arkansas it. still I on do. there. I do. Arkansas and Virginia are both teams that I have it, it, that that all season. I'm like, I, I see the roster, I see the coach on the bench. It all makes sense to me. I see the uniform. Yeah. All of this, all of this checks out. What I have not seen all season is a team that looks like you could actually go to the Final Four. <laughs> it's <laughs> like so the, true. You know, what I mean? but that, like, <laughs> it, it's like I'm hanging on by a thread because I think they can win an SEC tournament. Yeah, I really do. They're in I that do bottom too, half. Yeah. You know, and, and but then they could lose to Auburn. Exactly. So. Uh, they're hanging on by a thread. I have four in the Big East, and I have five in the Big Twelve. Iowa State not on the list. TCU hanging on by a thread with the yeah. Uh, so you're big gonna man. update this by Sunday. By Sunday, yeah. Yep. All right. Cool. I think last year at this time I had eleven. Wow, so it's wide open. This is a wide open year yeah. for you. Yeah, I would agree with that. No doubt. Yeah, it's uh. Are are you a are you a Cinderella fan in the NCAA tournament? Yeah. You cheer for. Because I I've been accused of being a Cinderella hater because uh, I I I think I think it's annoying as shit when like Loyola makes the Final Four. <laughs> well, there's a point. I, there's I, a point. I think that there. Sucks. Like, Coward was always good. He's like everybody loves Cinderella until you have to watch him in the Final Four. I, I agree with you Coward. Know? Yeah. So I, it's I'm like along with Sweet that. Sixteen. Yeah, give them a week of shine. You know, really? they, yeah. You know, ESPN goes to their campus. They're doing all access. Yes. Fest, yes. And then they got to play Kentucky, uh, and then they get rolled. But anybody that thinks that the Final Four would have been better off having St. Peter's in it instead of North Carolina, you're out of your mind. It's you like know, George Mason like, and you're, UConn. You're, yeah, you're I mean, out that of your was mind. brutal, <laughs> brutal to watch with Mason. Um, but that makes me a hater because, like, so many people – like, that's that's obviously what makes March Madness the I'm greatest sporting on event I'm on earth is people love the Cinderella's. And I, I don't I don't, I don't cheer against the Cinderella's <laughs> until it's like – like, if, if it's a Cinderella that actually has a legitimate shot of winning the national championship, I don't mind it. But most of them, most of them don't. That's why yeah. they're 15 seeds and 14 seeds. And- I mean, because UConn had all those guys, too – and then that was the year I think Florida was going for the back to back. No, that was the first year. It was 06. the first year. Okay. George Mason. Yeah, that was those. And then Florida beat the piss oh, out of them I mean, in the final four. Think about what that out. locker room was like. Yeah. Oh, we're playing Mason. <laughs> yeah, Come on. Uh but I would I was thinking about team like obviously I think everybody's pick is going to be uh because I saw Lenardi has uh Oral and College of Charleston on the twelve line. But I was yeah. looking a little farther. Like I was looking at like a Yale, Vermont, Colgate. Vermont is I can't do Vermont or Colgate. 
th- I've, I've done it too many times in a row and okay. it's never paid off. <laughs> I give Vermont credit. They went out West this year at the beginning of the year this year and just yeah. got their brains beat in by every Pac-12 I, and Mountain West team. I, I, I've, I've gone to that well too many. I've looked and that's at why the matchups are huge. Like that yeah. year they had yeah. to play Florida State and Hartford. Yeah, Who waxed. Colgate did had uh, Wisconsin. Arkansas. La- Colgate yeah, had Col- Arkansas. What Arkansas two years ago? They were up at half and then they didn't even cover. They were getting double digits. And Vermont, what's been Vermont? Do, do you remember who they played in the Vermont tournament? Because I picked to, Vermont like a couple different times. I want to say they had. To, I want to say they had to play Jonathan. Was it Jonathan Isaac? They play. I know. Have they won a game since Sorrentine and no, Syracuse? No, no. But no, every they, every time they, you see Vermont, you're just like, well, they beat Syracuse that one time. So. <laughs> Like so I, got, I got Vermont's my sweet 16. <laughs> uh, speaking of Syracuse, Bayheim. Yeah. Do you have any Bayheim thoughts? Any, uh, what, what, what is your, when you hear, are you a pro Bayheim guy? Are you an anti Bayheim guy? I, somewhere in the middle. I think it got a little too long. Yeah, I agree. You know, I just, I, th- I was reminded this morning I had people, I had Syracuse people, uh, revisiting when I used to write, I wrote an article for the ringer in 2017, 2017, Steve, Wow. that the, uh, the, the conceit was like Jim Beheim might hang it up at the end of this year. So let's like focus on his legacy. Now that was 2017, <laughs> six, years ago. six uh, years ago. And then he stuck around for six, four years. The thing I want to be done <laughs> is how many Syracuse players have not done well in the NBA mm-hmm. in the last decade because it is a running list. Do you think Syracuse as a program um, just disappears, just falls off the face of the earth now? I, You know, a lot of people talk about Shire, impossible job to fill K's shoes. I think this one's different because you got to get Syracuse up off the deck. Yeah. you got to get recruiting back going. Uh, you know, it's pretty obvious these guys aren't ready for the NBA defensively because they just sit in the zone during their time in, in college. How about, how about the last shot against Wake Forest? It's a it, Wake Forest. It's just a mad scramble to get you know, and you know it's you know that it's just going to be chaos, and there's only so much time left on the clock. Syracuse falls back into a two three. Yeah. <laughs> no one on that court had any instinct whatsoever that no. like you know stop what, ball. You know what? Fuck the zone. Let's stop the ball. <laughs> They're all just like, coach said I have to go to that spot on the floor, so go. I'm going to run to that spot on the floor. <laughs> Which trap are we wondering if the ball goes to the corner? <laughs> yeah, that was, that uh, was a, a brutal way to Brutal way to, to go out. Mm. Um, did, Bayheim's antics, though, or did, did that – was that like – was there ever a point where you thought it was like kind of funny and fun and, you know, like he's he's kind of the curmudgeon, but like, yeah, it's funny. He's, it's whatever. Are you, are you, I are you like guys like this guy's an asshole? I feel like we got a different Bayheim when he went to the ACC. Yeah, I agree. I really do. Yeah. Because, I mean, remember that night he blew up in Cameron? I yeah. Mean, he lost his yeah. mind. I, want, I think that was in the first – or no, it was late in the game. Uh, but I just felt like we lost a piece of him knowing – I mean, that's that's what it was. I mean, you talk about the Big East growing up, coming here for the tournament. It was Syracuse. It was Georgetown. It was St. John's. Yeah, he was UConn, always a son of UConn a bitch. was the new guy on the block. And yeah. that that resonated a lot of hate. So now, like, you don't even have Syracuse UConn anymore. Yeah. That, I mean, you would talk about hatred. That was hatred. Yeah. You know? And you just, it just, poof, it's gone. He, he, he was always a son of a bitch, but when he was in the Big East, it, 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 it was like, yeah, Grandpa's an asshole at Thanksgiving dinner, but like it just feels right, and like the dynamic was all right. But then when Grandpa got to do it, it's tradition. But when Grandpa went, we sent him to the nursing home, and we'd go visit. We're like, God damn, this man is, <laughs> this man is grumpy on a level that uh, everybody I didn't else know, asking, yeah, yeah. how did you deal with it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I I I, I always kind of like Beheim because uh, I I I was rereading the article I wrote six years ago, <laughs> um, and and I I liked him because he felt like the everyman. I it, that was kind of the angle I took when I wrote that thing. Was like he he was a guy that like like if you or I were became a college basketball coach, I think or that was certainly how I would handle it. Like I would I would not do well with people criticizing me like that publicly. So I would like if I was in a yeah. press conference. I would I would like to believe that I'd be buttoned up and and you know like professional. I wouldn't be. I'd be no. pointing people and I'd be like, "Why did you write that article about me, you son of a bitch?" And I would be <laughs> I would be doing all those things. I would be scheduling cupcakes. I would be I would probably would run a two three zone if I, I I don't give a shit if everyone thinks it's a gimmick. Like if it's winning me games, yep. I wouldn't care. Um, so like some part of him. All, for all of his flaws, when I would watch him, I would say, like, I want to hate you, but also I realize if I was put in your position, I would probably do a lot of the similar things. No doubt. So no doubt. That made him sort of likable in a weird the way. 13 and 16 Final Four runs were yeah. just yeah. out of the blue. 
Yeah. And that's credit to him, though. I, I am curious, though, because I, I think the ACC, I think Q's being in the ACC is fascinating in the sense of just, like, what happens with conference realignment. And I'm not ready to, to throw dirt on the ACC's grave as a whole, but, like, the ACC sucks. Like, the ACC, ACC basketball is not in a great spot, obviously. And I don't know if this is, like, a blip. I don't know if this is, yeah. you know, you, you want to you wanna pretend like it's going to be fine because of all the brands that they have there. Yep. But how I mean and a non-brand like I thought Virginia Tech was going to be good this year. Yeah, they were one of the biggest disappointments to me in the, in the in the country. But with the way things are going, and like all of a sudden the SEC cares about basketball and they're investing heavily in basketball, it's like I don't I don't know that we can necessarily say that the ACC is going to survive. And with the Syracuse in the ACC, I don't know. It's going to be fascinating. It's yeah. going to be fascinating. So, um, anything else? What else we got to talk about? What do, what do you got? Are you going to all four games today? Yes. Are you going tomorrow? Are you? Are you? Are you, are you going yeah, to like all? Are you tomorrow, tomorrow? Are you in town or no? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm going today. I don't know which ones we're going to because the Buckeyes play. Yeah, um, we gotta see how the Buckeyes. I gotta. Play. Yeah, I know. So I'm, I might bounce back and forth, but don't edit yeah. this. We gotta talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, thanks for doing this. Steve. Absolutely, man. Thanks for uh, anytime. Thanks for stopping by. Good to have um, you on the East Coast. Yeah. For it's, uh, a little bit. Remember when? Remember when you used to ask me to come on Sports Center all the time? Yeah, that was fun. Yep. What happened there? Uh, I couldn't keep track. Of, <laughs> I couldn't keep track you know, you know of where you were working. You know what happened? You know what the story? I uh, you, you probably do remember this. The last time you ever texted me, "Hey, you want to come on tonight?" I was like, "Absolutely, yes." Um, that day, the Sean Miller stuff broke uh, with the the DeAndre Ayton yeah. wiretap, and you you called me like an hour later, and you're like, "Hey, listen, um, so." You're not gonna be able to come on tonight, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, there, 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 there was no world in which I was not gonna come on and just like go nuts about uh, the wire, th- yeah, all that kind of thing, yeah. And uh, so when you're a little bit of a loose cannon, now you're, I was now you're a loose all cannon. grown up. I am all grown up here at Barstool Sports, you know, <laughs> nice, respected, journalistic. Good to have it. I'm sure all the kids are good. Be honest, happy. be honest. You can be, you can be honest. I can take it. I can, I honestly can. Um, do you think this look this this feels like an act of desperation? Me going from Fox to Barstool. Did, did, when you no. when you, did you read this as like what the fuck is this guy doing with his career? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I appreciate that. Money talks. <laughs> <laughs> I told I told the uh, everybody has their number. As I as I told Remember the uh, the part of my take guys on their show. Uh, this was my live tour moment, Steve. <laughs> Was, I took the live bag. See how long, I got the dirty Hope you money. last longer than lives looking right now. Uh, all right, Steve. Enjoy right. the Big East tournament. Appreciate Thanks, you, bro. buddy. All right. Thank you to Stanford, Steve, for, for joining us. He's the best. Uh, I, I, I think I can say he's a friend of mine. I don't know. We're getting closer. I, I, I should have asked him that on the in the interview, whether I'm allowed to say he's a friend. Um I don't know. Maybe next time. Maybe next time a, I'll approach the subject. That's a good interview strategy. Yeah, just just start like, every interview with, what are, are we? Are we friends? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's talk about Coors Light. There's nothing like the excitement of the big tournament, but every buzzer beater for your team is someone else's bracket buster, and every game is a chance to turn the tables. When your pride or your money is on the line and you need to take a beat, take a moment to chill with an ice-cold Coors Light. Uh, we're, we're chilling right now, TJ and I, I mean, we're, we, you cannot chill any more than we are with our teams rolling through the big 10 tournament. Um, they might be meeting next round, in which case we'll have to figure that out. We'll have to, we'll have to see what the show is all about. But right now, uh, I gotta say, I'm going to go back to my hotel. If we get done recording, I'm going to crack open a Coors Light. I'm going to kick my feet up and I'm going to enjoy a victory for one more day. If only one more day, that's okay. Yeah. I'm happy tonight. Maybe tomorrow night I won't be, but for tonight I'm a winner. Uh, there's only one beer out there that's literally made to chill, and that's Coors Light. When the mountains turn blue, it is as cold as the Rockies. When you need to hit reset, just crack open an ice-cold Coors Light. It's mountain-cold refreshment made to chill. When you need a strategic timeout from the madness, reach for Coors Light. It's the beer that's made to chill, so you can refresh the spirit and jump back into the excitement. Get Coors Light and the new look delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash Titus. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And now, here is Merrimack head coach, Joe Gallo. <laughs> All right, I'm now with Joe Gallo, head coach of the Mary Mac Warriors, the uh, best team in the NEC, regular season champion, conference tournament champion. Uh, if you turn on your television on Thursday and Friday for March Madness, you will not see this team play, though. Uh, why is that, coach? Make make this make sense for all of us listening. Uh, how the hell? What the hell is going on? You won your conference tournament. You're the best team. In, you're you're in Division One. Um, this is very very confusing for the ca- casual college basketball fan. 
Yeah. So we, you know, I, I don't know if I'll be able to make sense of it for you, but I can tell you what we're, what we're going through right now. You know, we're, uh, we're in our fourth year, uh, in, in what they call a, a transition period. Um, we were a division two school for however many years. Um, and then in the 1920 season, uh, we became, to, you know, we moved into the NEC. Uh, we started our four year transition. And uh, as part of that transition, the rule has been forever um, that you are not eligible for postseason to play in the NCAA tournament uh, or the automatic bid uh, through those four years. So, um, we just finished that fourth year, and and we will be uh, finally eligible next what, year. What to what play. what is the rationalization? I don't. It doesn't. It doesn't track. I I, I I've, I've thought about this for a while, because um, yeah. I I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm a logical man, so I I, yeah. I I I hear stories like this, and I'm like, this sucks. This is really bad for the team, bad for the kids. I hate it for them, but I'm sure there's there's a reason. There's got to be a reason. I can't find a reason. Yeah. I, it, it, this makes no sense to me. I know, and and you know what? I think they're they're. There are some reasons that I almost wish information was shared and put out there so people would know. You know, I think, uh, you know, they 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 don't want a school to maybe go and then two years in say, you know what, uh, financially, this isn't what we thought thought it were and we're going to move back down. I think it's almost just like a trial period, you know, not so much um, from a competitive level, but just from a school uh they want the schools to prove that they're actually committed to, to being division one. Um, yeah. There are some other, you know, I, it, it's not much a, I don't, I don't think this, this applies as much anymore because rules have changed with COVID and it's, you know, qualifying through the clearinghouse and all that kind of stuff has actually become a lot easier. But there was a time when, when we were division two, where there was a small window of kids that actually could be academically eligible in division two and not in division one. Um, we didn't have any of those kids on our roster, but I could see that being an argument of, well, these kids wouldn't have been eligible to play division one academically in, in some cases. So I don't know. There's a couple of reasons like that, that may make a little more sense to people, but, um, yeah. we tried to, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we, we tried to not use that as a crutch. You know, we, we actually, we won our, um, our regular season title in the very first year. I know. I know. I was going to ask you about that. So you've been down this yeah. road before a little bit, but that tournament, correct me if I'm wrong. Your comp, did you, did you get a play in the conference tournament to get canceled before COVID before you got the chance? We did not. This is the first time. Um, I think that the transition over the last four or five years is becoming more and more popular. Um, and these conferences just started to let. Yeah. Bellarmine, Bellarmine last year, I think was in the same spot, right? Like they, they, uh, they were. so, so what is, what is your messaging to your team? What is the vibe like? What is, um, just the, the overall feeling in the locker room when you win the NEC crown? Um, but also now your season's over. You know what? Um, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think the vibe would have been any different if if there was a tournament at the end of it. I think we just mentally prepared for it on the front end of it. Uh, we we're open and honest with kids and families when we recruited them, right? That's probably the toughest part is yeah. trying to get kids to come to your school. You know, every year it got a little easier. The first year it was like, you'll never have a chance. Then it's, all right, you'll be your senior year, your junior year, your sophomore year, your freshman year. So I think because we we were prepared for it, it's not like, they pulled the rug out from under us after we won. Um, we were just focused on winning that championship and the guys went crazy and they were celebrating. They were in the locker room forever. I was in my office having some beers with some buddies and, you know, we, we acted <laughs> as if, you know, it was the greatest thing I mean, ever. You, did. And you, you, you won. I mean, you won going into the season. This was the ultimate prize for you guys, I guess, because you knew there was, yeah. there could be nothing else after that. So in that, in that regard, uh, huge success. Uh, so for people that, uh, you know, just this week maybe first heard about Mary Mac basketball and this story um, has elevated itself to where now there's an awareness of your program. Um, you, you correct me if I'm wrong. You played for Mary Mac. You're an alum. This is this is a I, I did. yeah. Um, so what what is it that uh, for my audience, you would like them to know about Mary Mac basketball? What is what is it that that you feel like your program stands for and all that sort of thing? Yeah, well, it's a, um, hey, it's a great place to go to school. We're, we're located uh, about 20 miles north of Boston in, in North Andover, Massachusetts. Uh, the place has um, grown like crazy over the last 10 years under the direction of our, our president, uh, Dr. Hopi. Uh, when I graduated in 2004, we had about 1,800 students total. 
Um, now we're pushing 5,000 with undergrad and graduate um, buildings on campus everywhere. Um, just a really fun community and place to, to go to school and um, always have had great people here. Um, that's what I always loved about the place. I, you know, I was I was here as a, a player. I came back as an assistant coach. I bounced around a little bit. Um, I was an assistant at Dartmouth and then Robert Morris University. And then when the head job opened seven years ago, I, I came back. Um, and it's just a, uh, you know, the whole school in general, I, I think is just a lot of overachieving people with a big chip on their shoulder. Um, and it's how we operate as a program as well. And uh, we've gotten some, you know, tough kids who maybe feel like they've been under recruited a little bit. And, um, you know, e even this year in the world of transfer portal and COVID years. Um, now, I hope this changes next year because I have three seniors that I hope are coming back. But I think we're the only uh, regular season champ in the entire country that did not have a single fifth year guy. Wow. Um, I think us and Purdue are the only two teams in the country that start two freshmen in the backcourt. Um, wow. So we're pretty unique. Do you, have a seven, just like, do you have a seven foot four monster down low like they do? No, no, no. <laughs> you should get I, one of those. I love one. I love one. Well, love Matt Painter's <laughs> Matt Painter's probably got like four or five just like stuff in a broom closet somewhere. That guy just like finds them. He turns over rocks and you find seven footers. So maybe maybe yeah, have him throw we, one your way. <laughs> we could use one. Um, yeah, we were kind of we're kind of built in an old school way. We have, we started two freshmen. You know, we have three seniors that have stuck with us for four years. Uh, we have two transfers from James Madison, um, who who both were freshmen there last year. Uh, didn't get a ton of opportunity. Um, I think the coaching staff there maybe even pushed them along their way a little bit, and they found great opportunity with us. So we have a great mix of some four-year guys, some freshmen, some transfers, and it all came together great. Well, um, this year, a little bit disappointing for those in the outside world. It sounds like you guys are handling it well. I mean, like uh, for all, all things considered, I guess you did know it was coming, but uh, very disappointing for, for those of us uh, that, that, that would have loved to see you in, uh, in the big dance. But next year, we're ready, right? Like next year, you, you can you – can, you can make the tournament, right? So we can jump we can, on, jump on the bandwagon now. Let's ride it next year. Now. All right. We could have the whole team back. All right. There we go. Yeah. So I guess that's the silver lining. We'll just run it back next year. Let's make it happen. Sure. Um, is there anything else we can do coach? Like it, d d people, people are outraged about this. Like, how do we fight the fight for you? Like what else is, is that it? You just want us to jump on the bandwagon next year, like wave the white flag this year. There's nothing we can do to get you in this thing. No, I think that's it. I think we're All right. fairly good. Fairly Dickinson is out kind of parading around and, you know, good for them. They had a good year. They can have their yeah. bid this year. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, moving, moving I'm, forward. I, uh, uh, I'm, I, I, uh, started a segment on the show called I'll say it. So you don't have to, um, <laughs> fairly Dickinson frauds, frauds, get them out, get them out. We saw them lose. They didn't, they didn't earn it. Get them out, get Mary Mac in. Um, we'll, we'll make it happen next year, coach. I'll, I'll, everyone listening will be on the Merrimack bandwagon. Uh, we'll, we'll ride it to the big dance next year. Um, thanks for making time. We appreciate you. We'll have you on next year when, uh, when, when, when the, you bring the team back and you got things rolling. How about that? Awesome. Send me a, uh, shoot over an email or a text with, uh, with your address and size. I'll get you some gear. Oh, on hell way. yeah. Love that. Love that. All right, coach. All right. Thanks so much. Uh, man. I appreciate it. Yep. Take it easy. Thank you. All right, thank you to Coach Joe Gallo. Uh, I'll be I'll be riding the Merrimack train. That's for sure. Next year, um, we got to get them in the NCAA tournament and uh, let them have their moment. Um, speaking of things in Massachusetts, Merrimack in Massachusetts, TJ also in Massachusetts. Attention to the entire state of Massachusetts. How am I say, am I saying this correctly? How do you say the state? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Mass. Mass. Massachusetts, the founding home of barstool sports is now the latest state to offer the Barstool Sportsbook. So if you're a Massachusetts if you are in Massachusetts, shoot. Why can I not say the state, TJ? <laughs> if you are in Massachusetts, download the Barstool Sportsbook app and sign up today to take advantage of our Cue the Duck Boats offer. Any cash wager of $5 or more or earn new users a $50 bonus bet on the Celtics the win to win the NBA championship and a $50 bonus bet on the Bruins to win the cup. Terms apply. The Barstool Sportsbook is the official sportsbook of Barstool Sports and the only place to find exclusive bets and odds boosts from your favorite Barstool personalities. 
and there's all the great features you want in your sports book. There's live in-game betting. There's Parlay Plus to bet within the same game or across sports. There's Move the Line and Teaser Bets. It is easy and secure for registration, deposit, and withdrawals. So remember, Massachusetts, <laughs> this is the one and only Barstool Sportsbook. Must be 21+. plus. If you or a loved one is experiencing problems with gambling, call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. Play it smart from the start with GameSense. Visit GameSenseMA.com. Barstool Sportsbook. Massachusetts. Big deal. Massachusetts. Huge. I'll get it right at some point, but... uh. Anyway, let's uh let's talk about some all Americans. Get the hell out of here. Um, so I I I feel like part of my uh job here at Barstool now is to uh, bring some big J journalism to this outfit, you know. And I think part of that is like you see, this is the time of year where uh these these college basketball teams are tweeting out graphics that like their player got put on the sporting news. All he's been named a co all American, co fifth team all American honorable mention on the sportingnews.com, um, all that sort of thing. So it's one of my goals to get that with Barstool. I, I want to I wanna be the representative that's, like, naming all Americans so that way maybe we can get some great – like, we can be, like, oh, a real yeah. big J. You know what I mean? This is – so you, what you're about to do is the Barstool Sports. That's what I, I'm stepping up and saying, yeah. Team I'm speaking on behalf of the entire company. This is the Barstool Sports. <laughs> I asked nobody. <laughs> I'm doing this myself. Maybe it's just the Mark Titus show then. Maybe I don't need to speak on behalf of all of Barstool Sports. I'll just do it myself, you know? Like maybe I'm or swinging go bigger. Big. The, <laughs> the, the, the official, the official. All American. <laughs> yeah. Oh. The one and only All American list. Others I, are live. I do have a wooden vote, by the way. A wooden award vote. This is true. Really? I have a wooden award vote. Um, and Brandon Miller uh is not eligible. He was not named one of the finalists because of his off court situation, we'll call it. Um but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, I do have a vote at the end of the year. I I don't think I you don't vote on all Americans. You just vote on the one player I think right. that you believe is going is That's the best cool. player in the country. Um, I wonder if Brandon has a Heisman vote. Brandon Walker. Yeah. Huh. We should ask him. I wonder. <laughs> um. All right. Here's my all American team. I think I think it's pretty simple. I think the top four are locks. I think uh, anyone who doesn't have the, the, the top four on your first team, all American team, you're a bozo, you're a certified bozo. Um, and the four are Zach Eady, Brandon Miller, uh, Trace Jackson Davis and Jalen Wilson. Now, like I said, you can, you can have Brandon Miller off your wooden award watch. If you're one of those outfits, it's like, we care about the quote unquote student part of student athlete, or we care about like quote unquote, not being an accessory to an accessory to a murder situation. If that sort of thing is important to your criteria for naming all Americans, I understand that. It's your prerogative. You can do that. Um, I'm listing to you who I believe to be the five most talented basketball players in college basketball this year. Um, Edie, to me, is is who I'm going to vote for for Wooden Award. Spoiler alert. That is not much of a surprise. Um, there, was a, there was a moment there where Indiana fans thought Trace Jackson Davis had a shot um to beat Zach Eady for Big Ten player and I th I still think he did by the end I think if it, I think if they would have done co you wouldn't have got much argument out of me but um in terms of national player of the year I I don't I I, I it's Zach Eady and it's been Zach Eady for most of the year and that's not even like I I think if you're if you're someone who doesn't love Zach Eady maybe you're looking at this and you're saying you crowned him in November and then you just got lazy and said he never lost it when really if you would have like not crowned him so early, maybe you would have given the award to someone else. To that I say wrong. This man was dominant in a way we've not seen a big man be dominant in college basketball in a long time. I mean, I, I genuinely – Purdue fans will take this the wrong way because every single time I talk about Purdue, no matter what, I could say Purdue will win the national championship by 48 points, and they'll say, why do you not think we could win it by 50, Titus? Are you a hater? So they're going to take it the wrong way, as they always do. Um, but – I, I truly believe Purdue is like not even a 500 team if Zach Eady's not on this team. Yeah. I, I do not think they, they finish 500 without Zach Eady, which is less about like how much I hate their team and more that like this man is that good, that he carried this team to a number one ranking for like half the season, over half the season. Um, 22 points a game, 13 boards a game, 2.3 blocks, never really fouled, is hardly ever in foul trouble. 73% um, free throw shooter which is really impressive for a 7-4 guy. 
Um, he is like, if you want to go by like the most valuable quote unquote, he's, he's clearly the most valuable guy. Cause like I just said, I think Purdue's not even a, definitely not a tournament team, but maybe not even 500 without him. Um, I think he might be the most valuable college basketball player since Anthony Davis, maybe, I don't know, Doug McDermott, Frank Kaminsky. Like I'm trying to think of guys that like, if you took the, like they had, they had great teams and if you took them off the team, they would be absolute garbage. Um, I don't know. Anthony Davis is the the like is the one guy I, I I know it stops there in 2012. Maybe there's someone else. Maybe you could say Kaminsky or McDermott or so. I don't know, but um, that's how good Zach Eady was. I I I think Zach Eady was 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 really really good, and I had I had a lot of fun like joking about how he's tall and and you know twisting you know I don't know uh, screwing with Purdue fans here and there, but like you can't you can't deny the man's greatness, his efficiency, and um. Just how, how much he improved over the season. So, Zach Eady is my player of the year. He's definitely on the All-American team. Brandon Miller, um, I don't know. He, he Shooting 40% from three on seven – over seven three attempts per game is is absurd for a freshman. It's absolutely insane. Uh, for a guy of his size to do it makes it even more insane. Um, he had the legendary game at South Carolina where he scores 41 points, uh, hits the shot to send it to overtime, hits the game-winning shot in overtime, uh, he, he, I, I continue to think this, I don't, the, I, I don't know what the future holds for this Alabama team, but I continue to think that Alabama at their best is better than everyone else at their best. Um, and Brandon Miller's why, uh, if they do in fact go to a final four, go to a national championship, it is because he is going to elevate his play to an otherworldly level. Uh, he, he is the most talented, the most raw talent player in the country. I don't think there's any denying that. And he'll be the first college basketball player, uh, to hear his name called in the NBA draft. So that one's kind of a no brainer. Uh, like I said, there was a, if you want to do the off court thing, like I, I get it. Um, I, I, I'm kind of, you know, I don't, I don't mean to downplay that situation, but also it's like, I don't know. That's not my domain, you know, like I'm, I, I, I'll leave that to other people to, to figure out uh, for me, the, the dude is his, his talent's undeniable. So I'm throwing him on my all American team. Trace Jackson Davis um, can't go right, still doesn't have a jump shot, somehow could not be stopped this year and elevated his play from, like, being a pretty good – like, he, he went from, like, a pretty good Indiana player to an all-time legend who, if Indiana retired jerseys, he would have his jersey retired, no question about it. Um, he he finally started trusting his teammates. They Like, Indiana found a way to ta- – it, 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 he, he's such a fascinating player because – like I said, like he's he's got such obvious limitations, and yet he was dominant this year, and and um really played his way into uh, getting drafted. Like I think he's going to hear his name called in the NBA draft now. Where coming into the season, like part of the reason he kept coming back to Indiana was that he didn't have an NBA game. He still he still kind of doesn't. I don't know how it's going to work, but he was so good at everything else that it overshadowed his lack of a jump shot and um. Yeah, I don't know. His defensive instincts were incredible. Um, he averages four assists per game. Uh, he he, I don't know. I I, I you, you, there's there's you, you kind of run out of things to say about Trace because he he just defies logic when you watch him play and he gets double teamed and he just like palms the ball and he's sticking it you know like waiting for the double team to clear. Oh, the double team's not going to clear. I guess I'll just like whip a pass across the court to a wide open Trey Galloway for three. You know and um. It makes no sense if you watch if you watched Indiana play the first three years uh, that Tra- Trace Jackson Davis was there. You might think that he was just a stat patter and he was on some, he was on some terrible teams, but now it's starting to become clear he just like never really had <laughs> much talent around him. And when he finally got some guys that can play around him, uh, it is it is taking his game to the next level. And then Jalen Wilson, um, twenty points a game, eight point four rebound. I think Kansas is pretty obviously going to be a one seed. Um, I don't. Uh, I don't know if they'll be the number one overall seed, but uh, coming into this year, I I think if I remember right, Jalen Wilson shot like thirty percent from the three point line last year, and the only way Kansas is going to be good this year is if he figured out how to consistently be a threat from outside and consistently hit enough threes. He 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 ended up shooting I think like thirty four percent from three. Um, so he wasn't he wasn't like you know lights out like Brandon Miller was. Um. But he 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 stepped up his game in that regard. Became like a great leader, great uh, j- just just carried. There was the game at, at at Kansas State where he had 38 points, 
uh, with three starters fouled out. And that was just like a quintessential Jalen Wilson game where he just put the team on his back. They ended up losing, but like it, it should not have, it, it should have been over like the second these guys started fouling out and Jalen Wilson um, was, was just balling out of his mind. So uh, Bill Self to me at this point has shifted. Um, part of what makes Bill Self so fascinating is that he has shifted away from being like a, an X's and O's guy where every team, every time you watch Kansas play, it looks like Bill Self's like drawing up plays in the sand and, and, and these guys then execute those plays. He still does that. He's still great at timeout, uh, and, and baseline out of bounds and all that sort of thing. But what he's really become great at, uh, in, in recent years is he's gone away from teaching like set plays to his guys to he is now teaching um, how to re- how to just read and just play basketball. And this is something like Jay Wright was great at, and and uh, he he was like a, a pioneer, so to speak. Like this is stuff like the NBA guys have been doing forever. But um, he it, it, Bill Self has given the Kansas players freedom in a way that he never really had before, outside of like his point guards. Um, and the only way you can get away with doing that is if you have a guy as talented as Jason Jalen Wilson is what I'm getting at. So. Uh, Jalen Wilson, it goes beyond the stats. He, he's, he's been the best player on Kansas, and Kansas might end up repeating as national champions. I don't know. We still have to see what the hell's going on with Bill Self and his health because they're playing that kind of close to the best. All right, so that leaves – let me get another drink of water. Oh, my God, TJ, what's going on? They did say uh, Bill Self's out the whole tournament. So The NCAA tournament too? No, Big 12 tournament. Oh, Big 12 tournament. At least. That's just through the weekend. Maybe he'll be back. I don't know. They were saying heart attack at first. They but. put out an update that said it's definitely not a heart attack. It's definitely not but a heart attack? Underwent some sort of procedure. Why am I sweating so much? They turned the AC off after midnight. That's what happened. Okay. I'm sweating like crazy. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm huffing and puffing. and Oof. All right. Um, we'll get through this. Uh, so the fifth pick to me is it's three guys. It's West Coast guys. It's Tommy Hawkes. It's Azulis Tubelis. It's Drew Timmy. I think it's one of those three guys. Tyler Kolick has a case, I guess. Uh, Jalen Pickett's been awesome for Penn State. I don't think the team was good enough to really make his awesomeness matter to that level to get him to the first team All American level. Um, he's great too. I don't know. There are a lot of different guys. To me, it come it came down to the final three. I I thought long and hard about it, uh, and ultimately I landed on Hami Hakez. First of all, the other two guys are defensive liabilities in a way that Hakez isn't. Secondly. Hawkes and UCLA are, are the better team, and the reason they're the better team is because of him. I don't know. We're kind of splitting hairs at this point. If you like one of the other two guys, I'm not going to get too upset. Um, but Hawkes is, is – I, I know it's not a lifetime achievement award, but he is the heart of soul of UCLA and, and has been for years. And um, you, you sit – like, as a guy who believed until Jalen Clark went down that UCLA might be the best team in the country, and they still – like I've been saying, I still think they have the goods to win the national championship. It's just going to be obviously a lot harder now. Um, the fact that, that Hawkes is, is, is that team and, and finds a way to have impacts on an impact on games, even when one facet of his game is not working on that particular night. Um, you can't say enough about the guy. Like if, if, if you want to do it the way you're like, if, if you had five Hami Hawkes is, you're, you're you're you might go undefeated you know if you're doing that deal like the the aliens what's the hypothetical if the aliens come down and, and challenge us to a game of <laughs> are you doing max kellerman i want iguodala i want iguodala <laughs> yeah that's what it was if the aliens come down and they're like yeah. you have to clone someone and play they said one shot to save one the fate of the universe. the universe they got the death beam pointed at earth um, i want iguodala no if you had a team full of homie hawkeses you would have one hell of a college basketball team and he is he is he's just he's just a special treat and and, and hearing him talk after the, the Arizona after a senior night um in Arizona when uh he was talking about how tickets used to be two dollars when he got there and he was Mick Cronin's first class and uh just to see, again I, I understand that like that this isn't why I think he belongs on this year's all-american team because it, it shouldn't work that way where it's a career achievement but um I think he is one of the five best players in the country. He won Pac-12 Player of the Year over two Bellas because his team was better, one. But I, I, I think he just has a, more of an impact on both sides of the court. Timmy is is a defensive liability, and two Bellas is basically right there with him, and that should matter as well. So I, I had Hawkes as my my fifth All-American Coach of the Year. Uh, 
I'll be honest. I think I think coach of the year should just we should just wait till the national champion. This is one of the best takes I I have. Uh, I believe that the coach of the year every year in college basketball should just be whoever wins the national championship because that's what every coach is trying to do. And the guy who does it is the only one that did, and he should therefore be the best coach in the country. But it, for some reason, it doesn't work that way. Uh, I had five names written down. Rodney Terry and Jerome Tang in the Big 12 um, are, are two guys that, that got a lot of love. Um, I, depending on what publication you're looking at, I think both of them were winning Big 12 Coach of the Year, certainly some were winning National Coach of the Year. Um, my problem with both of those guys, so Rodney Terry takes over for Chris Beard. Um, very weird situation. Gets Texas to be the two seed in the Big 12. They're probably going to be a two seed in the NCAA tournament. Uh, they could go to a Final Four very easily. So um, he's done a great job of, of keeping that ship afloat. Uh, and Jerome Tang loses Nigel Pack in the transfer portal, picked to finish last in the Big 12, um, makes Kansas State. I forget how high they got ranked at one point, but they, they've they been top 10 for, for a, a fair chunk of the season. Um, my problem with both of those guys is that they ultimately didn't win anything. And I guess like that's just a me problem. But like I said, like I kind of think like, you, it, I, I don't know. Like, it doesn't really make sense to me for you to be coach of the year if you didn't actually win <laughs> your conference or win. I don't know. It, it, I, I, I've never really understood that. And, and that is to say, I do, I still don't understand how, um, I don't understand how Chris Collins won coach of the year over Matt Painter in that regard. Matt Painter won the Big Ten, and Matt Painter had he lost Jaden Ivey and Travion Williams, and um won the big 10 still with two freshman guards. It makes no sense to me. I thought that was the goal. I thought we were going into every season saying, how do we win the big 10? How do we win the big 12? How do we? So I think Rodney Terry and Jerome Tang can't win. And for me, I would not vote for the national player or national coach of the year. I would vote for Bill Self out of the big 12, not only just because he won, but because of the circumstances around Bill Self, um, losing what he lost from the national title team. Um, Basically had no shooting coming back. He did have Grady Dick coming in, but uh, there were a ton of question marks around Kansas. Not like Kansas was going to be terrible, but I certainly think Kansas being positioned to, to be a one seed, maybe the number one overall seed in this tournament, is super impressive. So I think Bill Self is above the other two. But at the same time, um, you know, Bill Matt Painter, to my mind, should be above Bill Self because – Matt Painter like had way less to work with and still got to the a similar level that Bill Self did. So I think Matt Painter's above Bill Self. And all that is to say, I don't even think Matt Painter should win it. At the end of the day, I'm voting for Shaka Smart because Shaka Smart, uh, you want to talk about like had nothing to work with, still found a way to win the Big East, lost his top two scores, brought in no transfers. Uh, last year they went 19 and 13. They lose by 32 in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Um, and basically – he lost his top two scores and he still somehow won the big East. That's insane. And I don't, uh, for me, it was that that's where I landed on. It was Shaka smart. Um, what he made this Marquette team. They, they have, as, as I think Steve said it on the show today, they over, they've been overachieving. And the reason they've been overachieving is because he's putting his guys in spots to be successful. Um, whether they, they could lose in the first round again by 32. And I still think he should be coach of the year because again, they won the big East by multiple games. So there you go, TJ. I think yeah, I like I would have voted for Chris Collins just because Northwestern had like no expectations. But yeah. I think any like every every coach you mentioned is a good I just, option there. Uh, yeah, if I don't know, maybe I'm just a hater. The tech, I mean, they finished second in the Big Ten. I know, but the, which but it's crazy because they were playing. I just like I I this is it's ultimately my gripe with this stuff is ultimately that I don't know what coach of the year is supposed to be. Right? Yeah, yeah. It doesn't make any sense because like. Player of the year is pretty obvious. Like, you can watch and say, who are the best players? And we all are like, well, the guy that's, like, kicking ass out there. And we all kind of, like, whether you agree on it or not, you kind of agree on, like, what we're looking for There's out of player of the year. that back up a player. Coach of the year is, like, it's just the haziest, weirdest, yeah. like, feel-good story type deal. But also, like, yeah. It, and it's so weird because it's never – this is a – uh, way too much Ohio State talk on this show, but it's the only example I can think of. There's like a thing where like no Ohio State football coach ever wins Coach of the Year in the Big Ten, even though they win the Big Ten, and that that like yeah. blows my mind. How can how like if you pulled all the coaches and you're like, who's the best coach in this conference? More maybe not every year, but they'd be like probably the guy that's making nine million dollars a year to coach football and wins this league every you know right seemingly every year. Yeah. Not the case. It's the guy who was picked to win four games, and oh my god, he won six. 
coach of the year. <laughs> it's it's most valuable coach. Yeah. It's not best coach. So that's why I for me it's like you have to win something. I don't know. That's like my first standard is like, did you win your conference? At this at this point, did you win your conference tournament? Did you we haven't seen who's won the conference tournament. So all I'm going off of right now is did you win your regular season conference? I don't know. But apparently that's not how people see it. They're like, were you picked if you're picked last and you finish third, <laughs> congratulations. But Marquette was picked ninth, and they won the Big East. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, TJ. That's pretty good. They actually won it. It's a lot harder to yeah. win the conference than to get second in the conference. It is, that Northwestern finishing second is such like a fraud second, too. It's such a fraud. If they, they lose to Rutgers in the last game, they were ninth. They were ninth. <laughs> they were one game away from ninth. Um but with the imbalanced scheduling and all that, it's like it's I, I win the damn conference if you want me to consider you for coach of the year. That's that's my. But ultimately, whoever wins the national championship, you're my coach of the year. But as of right now, I got Shaka Smart. All right, finally, last thing I want to do: uh, make shots, all star. So, um, you have to make shots to win at this level. I love I I, I so basically the, the genesis of this idea was talking so much about how much I love David Singleton in the last couple shows and Jordan Hawkins. Um, I was like, I should put together my all-star team of guys that I just like was obsessed with watching play because I just love watching shooters and and especially at the college level where uh, you hear all the time from NBA people that what sucks about college basketball is these dudes just clank wide open shots. So to see guys like Jordan Hawkins, I watched at the Garden today, curling off of screens and just shooting with a hand in his face, wet jump shots. It's so awesome, so fun. So uh, I wanted to put together my list of names. First of all, Brandon Miller was ineligible, um, not because of the other, but because, uh, he's too good of, he's, he's, he's too good of like an all around player. I think I was, you can't be all my all American team and my make shots all stars. So Brandon Miller was like a knockdown shooter, but he's too talented. That's not, that's not the spirit of the, that's not what I'm trying to do here. Number one is David Singleton. He shot 43% from three. He's a career 44% three point shooter over five years, almost 500 attempts. This guy never missed every single time I watch UCLA play. He makes every single shot. Um, so he must just miss when I'm not watching. I don't know. Uh, I freaking love him. He's my favorite player in college basketball. He's the captain of the team. David Singleton on the make shots all-stars. Number two, obviously Jordan Hawkins, probably my second favorite player to watch in college basketball. Uh, doesn't shoot as quite as high of a clip. 38 and a half percent. I think this year is what he ended up being, um, in the regular season on seven and a half attempts per game. But I will say about Hawkins, he's taking way tougher shots than anyone else on this list. He was he was asked to take just like absurd shots because he was UConn's go-to guy. Um, Freaking love the guy. And I agree with Steve that I think he's going to have a March moment. I don't know when it's going to happen. It might be in this Big East tournament. It might be in March Madness. I don't know. But uh, this man is built for for I, I, this UConn team I love, and, and he's a huge reason why. Uh, number three on the list is a joint uh, uh, a joint effort from the Baylor guys, Adam Flagler and LJ Cryer both. Um, I went back and forth on which guy I should put on the list, and then I decided I'm just going to put them both on the list. They both shot over 40% from three. They both jacked a ton of threes. Baylor lost to Iowa State again today. Um, that tells me they're very fraudulent, that they lost to Iowa State twice, an Iowa State team that the wheels are supposed to be falling off. Uh, but then now they've beaten Baylor twice in a week. So um, what does that tell you about Baylor? But they are a fun team, and they they hit a ton of threes, and uh, Cryer and Flagler are so fun to watch, and I could watch those dudes shoot threes all day. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to watch too much more of them because they don't play any defense, TJ. So enjoy it while you can. Uh, number four, I'm doing another joint one, the Penn State guys, Andrew Funk and Seth Lundy. Freaking awesome. I, I, I'm, I love this Penn State team so much. Um. They 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 live and die by the three, obviously. So uh, I don't I don't know what the future holds for them either because they can lose by twenty or they can make really good teams look really stupid uh, playing their booty ball. I don't know. Tonight, Funk was six for nine from three. I think he was incredible. Um, he the, both of those guys are just like they they are when they are on. They are one of the most fun teams to watch in college basketball. And that's why I think Michael Shrewsbury is going to get a big time job. Finally, I'm putting Courtney Ramey on my team. Um, Arizona, they play such a fun brand of basketball, and he, uh, him, and Kirk Creesa. I don't. I've been talking about it all season. I don't know how much I actually am going to trust them in March. But when Courtney Ramey was open this year for Arizona, the ball was going into the basket, and uh, and and playing an up tempo style for Tommy Lloyd uh, was a ton of fun to watch. So 
he's the fifth he's the fifth member. So it's Jordan Hawkins, it's David Singleton, it's Courtney Ramey, and then it's basically Adam Cryer. I'm I'm combining them into one person, and Seth Funk is what I'm doing for Penn State. So there you go. That's it. That's all I had. I just wanted to shout those guys out, TJ. I love shooters. If you make shots, I love you. So I love Seth all those guys. Funk. Seth Funk and Adam Flat or LJ LJ Flagler and Adam Cry. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to mix their names together to make them one person. I like Seth Funk. Seth Funk's a good name. That'd be a good name. Uh, all right, shout outs. Anything before we go? Arizona State's beaten USC by 16. Whoa. It's 44 27. My math is wrong. <laughs> That's more than 16. That's 17. That's 17. Whoa. Second half. Whoa. So Arizona State's in? I guess. That's got to be in, right? Depends on your bracketologist. That's right. Uh, yeah. Didn't it? Was, was Schwartz was down on when he was on the show. He was like, we suck. Arizona State. He said always, we suck, but he said, come Thursday, I'll have my gear on and be uh, ready to go. Like he's he bought back in. OK. Um. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm probably going to get a text from him a little later. It's like <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're back. back. We're yeah. back. That's much. <laughs> They're going to get stomped. Uh, I want to shout out Tim Miles, head coach of San Jose State. Um, he's got the the Spartans in the Mountain West semis, which is a massive accomplishment because they have been one of the worst Division One programs for a while. Uh, he was fired from Nebraska. I was really sad when it happened because he's awesome and um, he was he was an awesome uh, figure in Big Ten basketball. You remember him, right? Or no? Was this before your time? My brain kind of turned on. In like 2017, Dude, you... <laughs> 2016, <laughs> my brain kind of turned on. In 2017, uh, he was he was such a character, dude. He got when he got fired, he like almost apologized for, like he was he, he was like the nicest guy in the world. He freaking rules. You would have loved him. Yeah. He 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 ran out the Big Ten tournament. I remember like one his last Big Ten tournament. He was like running through the tunnel and he tripped and like fell and in the tunnel and then he gets up and like starts. Oh at the yeah, crowd yeah, yeah, and, I do. Yeah. yeah, yes, yes. Dude, he was awesome. He was a great interview and he's always yeah. Anyway, he 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 landed on his feet. At, he was he was a he was an analyst for a year or two and then uh, took the San Jose State job. Um, and yeah, they've been a garbage program and he's got him in the mountain. I don't I don't expect him to win the Mountain West to make the tournament or anything, but the fact that he's got him there is pretty wild given the circumstances. Um, shout out Ben Vanderplas broke his hand for Virginia. He's out for the year. That stinks. Um, yeah, no other way to describe that situation than it stinks. Um, shout out John Fanta was helping out Red Panda today at the Big East tournament. (laughs) This man is such a showman. When I tell you, like he was, he's tossing the bulls to Red Panda. And as he's getting ready to toss him, he's like looking into the camera because the camera is like feeding to the Jumbotron, obviously. So he's like pointing at the camera with the bulls in his hand as he's like throwing them at Red Panda. It, it, it the man just knows he knows how to put on a show. I was yeah. more enamored with John Fanta throwing the bulls to Red Panda than Red Panda doing her stupid little bullshit that we've all seen a million times. Do we get, do we get a report on how she did? Because she's she's had a rough rough season. Dude, rough season. I got her on my next four out. Yeah. By the yeah. way, she is <laughs> she's next four halftime out. show bracketology. Is, yeah. I've I've said my my number one overall seed every single year is the local youths playing basketball yeah, yeah, yeah. like twelve on twelve like well, you, yeah. You, 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 yeah, yeah, you yeah you get like twenty four everybody kids. gets get yeah. some time on the court <laughs> and they're just running around and it's chaos and like they're shooting from their shoulder like just you know yeah catapulting the ball up to the basket that's the best halftime show um, Red Panda, so she did two shows, I was told, today at Big East Tournament. The first one I saw, the second one I did not, but I heard about. The first one was rough. It was really rough. And, in fact, I was sitting next to Jake uh, Marsh, our our sweet, sweet boy Jake, um, who, in his, in his naivete, was, like, pulling out his phone. He's like, oh, my God, it's Red Panda. Oh, my God, it's Red Panda. And I said, Jake, buddy. I hate to be the one to tell you this, but she's not. She's lost a step or two. Yeah. And he's like, that can't be right. It's Red Panda. And I'll be damned. She was dropping bowls left and right. And and Jake was. Jake looked at me like everyone at this company does when like things go wrong. When I say things and then they go wrong, they look at me and he said, you did this. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't do this. I told Why do you hate me for speaking the truth? Yeah. Um, 
she was dropping like crazy. But then I heard tonight in the second, uh, the 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 second uh, session of games at the Big East tournament, she killed it and didn't drop a single bowl. Was with the reports. But I found that interesting that I wasn't there to see it. Right. So I don't know if I'm being lied to. I don't know what's going on. But Red Panda second half team. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe she played her way back onto the right side of the bubble yeah. tonight. She's going up against baby races <laughs> baby, in the play game. What's your favorite halftime show? Baby races. Baby races? <laughs> yeah. Baby races are pretty good. I saw a corgi race yeah. in Indiana when I was when I was in Bloomington. They did a corgi race, which is it was pretty solid. I, I, baby I, races yeah. are good. I got to figure it like somebody's got to do something new. Somebody's got to bring something out. Like there's too many dog acts. They're cool. Yeah. They're great, but yeah, somebody's got to invent something new that I could watch. The fr- I hate to say it. This is God, dude. I'm I'm just becoming a curmudgeon, I think. But like, the frisbee dogs. Like, I don't know if it does it for me. Anymore. Yeah. Like the dog, you, you throw the frisbee and the dog catches it. And I I, ha- I have a dog. I love it. My dog. He can catch. But but like also he, he can, can catch, catch it. Yeah. The frisbee. You know, like I can throw a frisbee. He'll catch it. So it's like give me a dog throwing frisbee to a guy. Die, yeah. <laughs> that I would watch. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. Now we're talking. Um, Red Panda's just got it. She's got to mix up the act. She's got to. You know how we like look at basketball players and we tell them to add something to their game in the off season. Why? Why do we not expect that out of halftime performers? Yeah. Red Panda's been doing the same shit every single year now. Show me plates. Yeah, show me some plates. Give me some different <laughs> or like make the bowls like actual china. So like when yeah. they fall, it shatters and like there's stakes to this. You know, <laughs> set a set a whole table on your head yeah. and put a tablecloth, forks, knives. Yes. <laughs> And then pull the tablecloth off and it all stays still. I don't yeah. know. Um, let's get in. That's a good idea. We should. We That's an off-season show for us, I think. As we let's get Red Panda in here. Get Red Panda on the show. Get Red Panda. Get Sister Jean. Let's get a full show. I'll do a three-hour show for those two. Uh, <laughs> fix both of their acts. I think Sister Jean's act's tired. Yeah. I think Red Panda's act's tired. All right. That's enough. I think that's it. Um all right, that's it. Everybody enjoy uh enjoy the next time we do a show, we're gonna have a bracket. Selection Sunday. What are we doing Sunday, on Selection Sunday? Sunday? What's the plan? We're doing a um, live show? Yeah, there'll be a live show bracket reveal. Okay. I think it's you, Jake, others. Big mm-hmm. cat, maybe? Yeah, big cat. Special guests. I think uh some I think we're gonna get some coaches, but um I think some of the coaches that we so I think some, oh some, I see what you're saying. Some of the coaches that we were counting on having on the show might not be in the tournament. TJ, <laughs> <laughs> if you want Pike, so, I got him. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we might have to we might have to call an audible on some of these coaches that we had lined up. Uh, no, I, I think I think the guys we want are gonna make it. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a live show on Selection Sunday. Then I think the plan, as far as I know is Jake is going to come on the show, on my show, um, on this show, and we're going to fill out our brackets. So we're going to do a podcast Sunday night, obviously, for Monday morning that will come out. So, yeah, the next time you hear you hear the Mark Titus show, we'll have a, we'll have a bracket. It'll be, it'll be done. It's all How about happening. that? It's Dude, that's wild. It's all coming together. When you say it like that, that's wild. Like, the Buckeyes might be in the tournament next time people hear my voice. <laughs> Probably not. Um, all right, so yeah, check out the live show on Sunday. Uh, we'll be sure to promote that, obviously, from from all the channels, and um, you can watch us do that. But then, uh, yeah, we're gonna do a podcast that night and uh, put it out Monday morning. So we'll see you guys in.